the games begin. to be alone.
What is going on, everybody? <laughs> Jeff, you messed me up. That's fine. That's all good. Welcome to Funkatopia WTF. I'm your host, Mr. Christopher. This is my illustrious co-host, Jeff Page in the house. What's up, everybody? Man, I hope you guys are all doing fantastically well because we got an amazing show tonight. Yes, and, we do. Uh, yes, we do. And I didn't even say, I didn't even preface it with bring your drink. Because uh, I did, I did you bring a drink? I, I well, um, uh, oh. <laughs> got some Camus. It, I, I don't know. Relax. Coffee and water count. Sit back and just relax and just. Hey, chill. I can switch up real quick. It's not going to be that difficult. Yeah, there you go. So we uh, went away with the we we didn't do the the pre show. We kind of figured we'd just kind of start and give you guys a little bit of a taste of uh, some uh, Undertaker action and. Uh, I was I was just telling Michael. I said I don't remember if piece sent me that to me or not. I don't remember where that came. It was just there's so many videos. There's yeah. so it's ridiculous. It's but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. thing, man. Uh, uh, welcome to Funkatopia, everybody. If you're listening on the Funked Up app, thank you so much. Welcome, one and all. And hopefully, my uh, levels are going to be okay on the app. We are working through some some things via the app with my level specifically, but uh, everywhere else, you guys should be perfectly fine. And uh, we have a fantastic show today because tonight we are welcoming the one and only Michael Bland and Sunny T. In the same show. I mean, I mean, hello. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I've even hinted or brought that up, people have lost their minds. And what I love is they're they're in the green room right now, just prepped up and fired up and ready. And it's just like I'm like, you know, this happy puppy just like stand at the door, <laughs> like the postman is delivering or something. <laughs> Yes, and, it's, uh, and uh, thank you so much for the uh, the comment on uh, Elena. Elena says the new app and design is fantastic. Yes, for those who have not downloaded the app, if you're planning to going on the road and you can't watch the show, you can download the Funked Up app. It's available on both Android and iPhone platforms, and we have two radio stations on the app, and both of them are ASCAP licensed, so the artists get taken care of when we play their music and this broadcast right now is broadcasting over the uptown radio channel which is the prince channel on that app so if you do not have it download it it's the funked up app and of course let's go ahead and get the preliminaries out of the way if you're watching on youtube please subscribe and please please like subscribe do whatever you do on uh, youtube and also on facebook please click follow also on uh on Facebook, which what's it been insane. What number did I say that we were at Jeff page on Tuesday? We were at 60,000, 60,000 followers on <laughs> Facebook. Um, and in one week we are now at 63,000 followers on Facebook. One week through 3000 brand new followers in one week. Wow. Uh, love it. Love it. Love it. And that's because, 
um, you guys, you, they're doing exactly what we're asking. Like, hey, you know, tell your friends, tell your people, because this is the place to be. There is no other place to be or, or no other group that you want to listen to on the regular. There are other great groups, but we're the ones you want to listen to all the time. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, do you see that message from Kristen Jeff on that? I don't know if there's anything that can be done. Uh, let's see. I was uh, popping through. Big echo on Jeff's mic on the app. On the app. Yep. So we're just gonna oh. just work. We're, we're gonna work through it all. <laughs> we're still working through it all. So it's all good. Uh, but everywhere else, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everybody else, everywhere else, are you listening to? Uh, as long as that's fine, you'd be perfectly okay because with the app, once the show gets uploaded, you can re-listen to it on the app uh, there as well. But, um, you know, if you're having still having issues with the app as far as listening to the show live, just go ahead and go to facebook.com slash Funkatopia or youtube.com slash Funkatopia or twitter.com slash Funkatopia. And, um, yeah, Trish is saying the exact same thing. So uh, that's okay. We're just going to keep on moving forward. And um, that's it. Big show tonight. The one and only Michael Bland and Sonny T are with us right now. And let me just go ahead and just say, I'm very, very excited about it. And I, we shouldn't even procrastinate anymore. I say we bring them in, bring the boys in, and let's do this. Uh, you guys ready for this? Everybody good? Uh, I, think, I think we should do it. Thank you guys for being here. Let's have some fun. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll bring on the one and only Michael Bland first. What's going on, Mike? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Big man on campus. Look at you. Oh, man. Uh, and then, of course, the one and only Sonny T, the other big man on campus. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. It is. I'm, going, I'm, my, I'm looking down, Carolyn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I get it looking up. <laughs> Look out, you Look guys both, both got halo actions uh going on. Something's yeah. happening back yeah, here. It's, it's not an accident. It's uh yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, there you go. It's, it's a conspiracy theory for sure. Right. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Good to see What's you, man. Going on? Yeah, man, I ain't seen Sonny in months, man. Yo. My that goodness. That can't I be true. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he's coming over tomorrow. Oh, true. Yeah. No, it's for okay. tomorrow. It's a, uh, you know, I cool. mean, Sonny's, uh, you know, I've, I, Sonny does uh, a lot more traveling than I do. He, you know, he's still, well, he can tell you himself, but he's still musical director for Georgia, this artist in Italy. And he's also been yeah. touring with Corey Wong, if you guys know who Corey Wong is. Of course, Corey okay. Wong and the Wong Notes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sonny's, yeah. That Sonny's, was yeah, Sonny's traveling more. I'm, I'm I'm mostly doing business with Soul Asylum now. That's pretty much my, that's 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 my job. So, I'm like number two guy. <laughs> so, you know, do. I'm, yeah, I got plenty to do, but Sonny's got to do it. In, Sonny's intercontinental with his. I'm just, you know, right. <laughs> rolling on the flight. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we don't see each other as often as we'd like to. It's like it's it's you know this gig is kind of an. Uh, an excuse. I mean, you know, we'll get into it, but yeah, for us to hang, you know, because we yeah, haven't done this like, in a minute. Yeah, half it's gonna half, really half, be, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, half of doing playing music, the, the reason you do it is so you can hang out with your friends, you know. So I always right. try to make Absolutely. friends with the best musicians, you know, I, I ever came across, you know. And Sonny's like, I mean, he's really like the closest to a brother I have in this world, you know. Sonny and straight I for me. We're we're so close. I mean, it's it's almost a telekinetic, you know. Yeah, I was just situation. gonna say that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you see them notes coming before they hit. Yeah, we <laughs> we often play the same phrases. That's crazy, we, man. We look at each other and like, oh, well, I was gonna say that too. Me too. You know. Right. <laughs> yes. no. now, Sonny, I saw an interview that you did with. Uh, it was like a little brief interview because Corey Wong actually has his his YouTube channel, and he was doing an interview with you, and you were talking <laughs> about that. You were talking about how. It is like so drastically important that you actually play live with people because if you just sit by yourself and you don't do anything, you have to be oh, yeah, to have in that brotherhood and and to be able to feed off of one another. You got to have that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You definitely got to play with other musicians because if you you know it's cool to you know learn your technique and you know practice and you know tighten your mess up, you know. 
But it's a whole other thing when you're playing in a collective, when you're playing with different people. You know, timings are different. Just the interaction with people are different. Then you start hearing the harmonics with everybody in the room. And it's just it's just better to play with other musicians because, you know, I, I, there's a lot of great guys I see online if you're really, really playing. I'm just praying that they go out and play with bands. Yeah, because often that's, well, that's the true tell of what kind of musician you are because it's one thing to sit at home and focus, you know, on, you know, the, the, on yourself and what you're doing, but it's an interactive uh, right. uh, thing. It's an interactive en endeavor, you know? So yeah. often when people have spent too much time shedding and hanging out in the basement and whatnot, they don't know how to integrate into another situation, you know, right. you got to keep your mind flexible. And, and also music is very much about sharing ideas, you know? Yeah. Right. It's not it's not just the energy of the music you're playing, it's the energy that you're resonating in your own body. You That's have right. to be around absolutely you know, and yeah. have a choice. That's just incredible. Yeah, everybody yeah. has their inner time. You have that inner temple. That's right. You know, and you need to share that with other people, you know, when you're yeah. playing, you know, so you can mm -hmm. have a collective, you know, and you can lock that time together, lock that band together, and it's just you know, roll, you know. Yeah. Man, it is the first time that I've had Sonny is the first time I've had you on the show. So it's an honor to have you because let me oh, just say you, you are one of the most revered and legendary Minneapolis based music musicians on the planet. I mean, even I, there was a quote from, from Prince that he actually had uh, that I saw in far out magazine. He says, I listened to everybody. My favorite of all time is Sonny T. I thought Sonny was God. Sonny was my <laughs> oh, just crazy. A, a lot of what I do, a lot of what I do on guitar, I learned from him. I'd go over to his house and we'd play records and he'd show me things on guitar. What I mean, yeah, when you have true. the virtuoso like like Prince saying stuff about that, I mean, I mean, how do, how do you even receive that? You know, it's I don't know. Sometimes it's you know, I, I go back to when we were younger, you know, and it's just like it was just an everyday thing. You know, he was at my window, him and Andre, you know, while I'm in the basement playing because I had all the band equipment in the basement. So I told my mom, let him in. <laughs> so next thing you know, me and Prince were just there all night, just playing all night. And my mom would get mad about six o'clock. You guys got to go to bed. <laughs> so, it, I mean, this went on for months and months, you know. You know, because he would always come out my house and borrow my pedals and my equipment. And, you know, I play Friday night and then I'm just wore out. I'm not doing anything. He plays Saturday night and he's do, do, do. There's Prince. He's at the door. Hey, man, what's going on? Can I buy your envelope following your first pedal? Yeah, man, go ahead. Sweet. Go down the basement and get it. So, I mean, we had that kind of thing, you know. Yes. Yeah, I man, crazy. Tony M. <laughs> crazy. Tony, Tony M's in the house. He said, Sonny would come to my house and do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what up, <what else>, Tom? <laughs> yeah. and, and listen, I can verify. Sonny wasn't around, and Prince told me a couple of stories about Sonny. You know, this is it's the truth, man. He said he and Andre would go over to Sonny's house and they'd be looking in the in the base the window the that goes to the basement. And they, they said he said Sonny would be <laughs> on like a mattress, like no box spring. <laughs> Right, yeah. he just down there playing. He said he had a, a Stratocaster and a pig nose amp, and Sonny would just be smoking cigarettes and just just messing up the wall. Right. Just and you know, he said he said me and Andre would watch Sonny for hours and then just go swat mosquitoes for the rest of the night because it was better than television. <laughs> it was better than TV. Just watching Sonny through the basement window. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. that's, that's, that's so, just so, amazing. Just out of curiosity, uh, uh, since we're talking about that, let me ask you this, Sonny. Where did where did your musicianship, your musicality come from? Was it mom, dad, both, somewhere else? Where, where did it come from? Well, you know, I don't really know because I really didn't have a musical family, you know. It just came, you know. My, my, my grandmother was in a, in a choir. She was a choir director. But other than that, I think it probably came from her, you know, because... Other than that, nobody was in the music at all. You know, my brother's a great artist. He could draw. You know, he could pick up a guitar and fool around a little bit. You know, but you know, I just, I was the only one playing music, really. 
So, okay. Yeah. I read somewhere Crazy. on one of your uh, things and it's, it's out there that you taught Prince how to play the bass. So my question is, did you really teach Prince how to play the bass or? I'm not even teach him how to hold the bass, you know, just some funk things where you could really get in. Cause I was really getting into that slap thing at the time. And it was like, he was just like, all right, not, not that, no, I, he, no, I, not that, this, 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 <laughs> but I'm left handed. So he was smart enough to be able to translate all that mm. for a right hand, you know? So that was crazy. I mean, he picked up so fast, you know, just amazing, especially on guitar real fast. I'd show him different harmonic things. It's like, cause he'd say, man, what's that chord? How'd you do that? It's like, it's like this, man. <laughs> I did not like <laughs> Just listen to it first. You know, E minor six, but you move this here, you know? And he's just like, wow. So he, he was a genius. He picked up very quick. And I know that Prince always claimed that Larry Graham was a huge influence on on him. And I know that uh, Mr. B Kings here says, "Please ask Sonny about Larry G." What do you guys have like a relationship in uh, later on, or did you get a chance to cross paths with Larry Graham, or but something specific that maybe he might be referring to here? Well, I recorded with him in the studio with Prince. Remember, we did that recording, Michael. Well, yeah, we but being Larry, like double bass. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Man. Remember, we, we, did a, we did a double bass track. That was the same. We must have. Go ahead. Sorry, Sonny. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, that was, I think that was the same day we recorded the majority of um, Lotus Flower. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we were just kind of getting it together. And uh, Larry jammed with us on like one, one thing. Like, we cut one thing with Larry. Then we went into yeah. like. All of that other music, Wall of Berlin, right. uh, Colonized Mind. I mean, it's we right. cut probably ten songs that 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 evening, that yeah. night. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Including yeah, and, and, and was that, uh, yeah, and including you know the Larry thing, the eleven. So yeah, that was man. crazy, man. Oh God. I mean, Larry had that bubble going, boy. Like, I, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, go ahead, boy. Go ahead. You were fun. <laughs> Great piano player too. Yeah, you can play the piano too. Mm. So, I mean, you had to cross paths with so many bass players over the years. I mean, with Mono Neon, obviously, Bootsy, probably. I'd imagine you've done some work with Bootsy off and on. The groove is in the heart. <laughs> when we was down in Brazil, we did the Rock and Rio. That's when I first met Bootsy. <laughs> yeah. Because he was there with uh, Delight. And they're doing that. Groove is in the heart. That's right. <laughs> No, I think and that was, was the first time I met Boosie. Right. Yeah, he was all over that album. He was he was all over that D Light album. It was fantastic. He was uh, in the hotel yeah. elevator. He was in the elevator with Santana and somebody else. And the was, doors opened. Billy really Idol, the guy with the blonde hair. Yeah, yeah that's that's name. Really Idol. Yeah, yeah wait, wait, it, it was, was like, him. Was <laughs> they were in the elevator. We were in the lobby, and the elevator opens, and it's them. And Santana was like. Hey man, <laughs> you know, like, right. he, said, he said, "You the drummer, right? That man, you be frying some chick chicken up on that stage, man. You be frying." Some <laughs> <laughs> Santana is talking to me, me. <laughs> well, it's crazy. I, I don't and Whitney know. Houston. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was. We got Whitney Houston story too. When we was in Monaco. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. You got to share that. I, we, I, we, 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 go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. It's just crazy because I haven't seen so it's just so funny with all these stories going ding, 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 ding. Exactly. Yeah. And so we were sitting out eating dinner. And so Whitney Houston was there, but she was walking around and she had four violin players following her around <laughs> behind her. While she's walking around, and then she walked right up on the Michael and just gave him a big old hug. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. what? That was crazy, man. Everybody got quiet. Like, Dang, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know who it was until <laughs> well, she started talking. But she, I saw, she put her hand on my shoulder, and she had a diamond as big as like you remember those kids suckers that were like diamond rings, <laughs> ring like, <bottom>. right. <laughs> Yeah, that's how big <laughs> the diamond was on Whitney Houston's finger. And I was like, who is this touching me? She said, oh, brother, God. I just want to tell you, how you, you bad on them drums. She's like right in my yeah, ear. She just walked right up on him. Like, Whoa, crazy. Oh. 
It is, uh, Mr. Christopher and I are going to have our own theme music anywhere we go from now on. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. It was crazy, man. She had finally played follow the ride. I was like, Oh my God! Oh, yeah, man, you I bad. I had to go back to the door. I didn't know who who that was. Yeah. I'm still trying right. to process with an elevator opening up, and there's Billy Idol, Santana, Billy. and Bootsy Collins. And Bootsy. In uh huh. <laughs> it was the, the Rock and Rio <laughs> Festival. Rock and Rock and Rio. Is it? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. oh my God, Sonny, tell me about this band right here. Oh. <laughs> Some funky boys right there. <laughs> now, that's the family, the original family from Minneapolis. The Prince ended up playing with us too, actually, after Andre and him kicked him out of the band. And so, and plus he was trying to go to New York. So we were playing, and he's like, Well, this is add this add Andre. I mean, this add Prince to the band. You know, we can pay him because we were saving for equipment. But we ended up paying him, you know, so he could get to New York. He tried to shop his demo. And go see his sister. So, but this band, yeah, I grew up with most of these guys. I grew up with Joe, the guy back there with the big fro. Grew up with Randy, Jeff, the guy in the front with the white suit, Bill Perry. Grew up with him from childhood. Pierre came in later. Pierre yeah, Lewis, the guy with the white hat. And Spike, I've been knowing Spike the Moss forever. He's a community leader on the north side of Minneapolis. He's, he stopped a lot of crazy stuff going on at that time. So, yeah. yeah, I got nothing but love for all them guys. You know, a lot of them are gone, but uh, God bless them and rest their souls. But uh, yeah, it was a really, really fun band. It was a fun band to play with because all we did was practice too. It was really crazy. And you know, it's so funny because all them guns are real. <laughs> if I just bought their own guns at home. <laughs> <Man. laughs> like, yeah, okay, bring your gun for the picture, y'all. Oh, 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 oh hip-hop generation is was showing off their guns or whatever. You guys got the money bag. You got the case open. Right. Crazy. crazy. Like, I did it first. I don't care what they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, oh, see, no see, but all those guys could really play. They could really play. And Joe, he's yeah. still, he lives out in Vegas. He's still a good drummer. Still a great drummer. He can play. So for those who are who, who don't know and maybe missed it, the name of this band was The Family. And uh, they were actually, you guys were the, the house band for the Way Community Center uh, up there. For, yes. For, for, and here, I did have a question because th the name of the band was The Family. And yeah. for those that are scratching their heads, this is not the same family band that came out in 86, was it? I guess that was that. that no, no, no. Now and, Prince and, just used that from this, <laughs> and that's and so. that's what I was going to ask you. How did you feel about that? Because obviously that this band was disbanded at that time. At that time, but did you? Oh, feel I was anything? hot, man. Yeah, I was what, hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, like come saying? on, man. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was hot. <laughs> no, actually, it was it was it was okay with me because you know it, it was more kind of like you know well right on, bro. At least you're keeping that name alive, you know. So, no, it didn't really bother me so much. It was more, you know, it is what it is. You know, it wasn't copyrighted, so you could use it. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of surprising. And then, of course, we, we, if we're going to dip into Minneapolis history. We can't do that without uh, a little bit of Lewis connection in the house. Dude, where are you taking these, these fossils <laughs> off that, <at>, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh my this was after the family broke up this, then uh i'd start hanging out with pierre and andre and uh man barbara and uh god what's the drummer's name god, i can't remember his name been too long it wasn't but, little um, Mo, was it yeah, that band was dope that girl could sing man she was really really good man but um it's so funny we only did one gig we took this picture did her did uh, put the album Try to put the album out. We only did one gig. Well, I only did one gig with them. Yeah, they ended up going down south doing something. Hmm. But um, yeah, that was a strange period because I was like, the family broke up, and I had all the instruments in the basement, and I'm like, now what do I do? <laughs> it's like, what am I going to do? Put another band together? 
<laughs> you know, it, it was a crazy period. So, <laughs> and, there, and there's Prince tapping on the window. Mama left. Yeah, him. exactly. <laughs> exactly. But no, but yeah, that was that was a, that was a fun period. Prince actually came in and played on uh, "Got to Be Something Here," which is one of the tracks from uh, that you guys have worked on, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, he played uh, guitar and sang background mm-hmm. with me. Let's go. Yeah. And yeah, that's is right. that is that album? Is that full album ever going to see uh, potentially see a release? Because uh, from what I heard, the album was actually constructed and. I read somewhere that like one of the copies sold for like a thousand dollars or something. Uh, only mainly because well, it was that. kind of released by some label, but I don't know whatever happened. It just went boop, 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 just disappeared into the matrix somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> it got sucked into the wall or something, but it, it never really came out. So maybe I don't know. And, and and I don't know what you know, uh, Michael. I I got lots of questions for you, brother. I got lots of questions for you. Yeah, that's cool. Listen, let Sonny talk, man, because th- nobody ever gets to hear from Sonny. And, you know, <laughs> okay. and, and, no, no, man. Let me hear from you, man. I got a million no, things man, to say. I've been, running, okay. I've been running my ah, I've been running my mouth for years, Sonny. They want to <laughs> the people want to want the straight truth from Sonny T's mouth. So yeah, no, go ahead. I'm, I can answer whatever when you want, man. But this is oh. this is history. This is Sonny. Needs needs to go ahead and set the record straight. You yeah, because one of the things that I had heard um, you say in a, a book by Dan Hill called Pop Life um, regarding everything that was going on in Minneapolis at the time, and people were asking, you know, what, what's what's kind of happening with some of these bands, and you were quoted in that book as saying, "It's one sided. It's closed up. The mafia runs it." You were obviously being a little bit of tongue in cheek, but what was oh, going yeah. on? What was going on there with with everything in in Minneapolis at that time? That <clears throat> well, black bands couldn't play downtown <laughs> at that time, so we had a couple places we could play. You could play at the Way, you could play at the Phil Sweetly, and, and you could play when they had a festival there. You know, when the, they had the parade that comes to Minneapolis, so they try to keep all people from getting beat up by the police downtown. So we would have a festival. You know, at the Phil Sweetly where everybody would come and then all the bands would play there. You could play at the YMCA. And then use a uh, place in St. Paul that we used to go and play. And then get ran back over the bridge. <laughs> it was crazy because being out in St. Paul was at war at that time. So, <laughs> but it was uh, <laughs> a little enough of about that. But anyway, <laughs> it was um, the craziest story it, that you about playing playing the gig and then getting and getting chased out. I mean, was there any like was there like really close calls back then? Yeah, man, the cats, man, it's just like you know, me have St. Paul always, you know, back well back then. Now it's not so much that now. I mean, we've grown up and acting kind of act like human beings now. But you know, back then it was crazy. It's like if you cross the bridge, you know, you better make sure you can get back over there, back to Minneapolis before it gets dark. Because <laughs> you have, you know, the bangers over there and the police department. So it's it's more about self-preservation, you know. So um, and we went to a party one night and we had no business actually going to the party. So in St. Paul, we just had a party. The band members, we just had, we played, went to the party. So the guys, I heard, I seen the guys come in. I said, man, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here right now. So and one of the singers, he's a pretty boy, right? Roland Willis. <laughs> so he had stand. He had one of the canes. He's standing there. So I said, we got to go now. Soon we, soon as we got outside, they came out and started shooting at us. <laughs> so every, this is our cell we have. So we just started running down cell we have, ditching between houses, running between houses. I'm like, how are we going to get home? How are we going to get home? Then one of the guy's moms got in the car. And came over and picked us up. Yeah, you get in the car. <laughs> Brothers back to Minneapolis. But that would have been like an all night sitting in the bushes waiting, you know, looking around. So I mean so, it was like that back then. You know. In the in the back of your head were you hearing Warriors come out and play yay? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but if they were um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, for us it was that was really the only places that you could play. 
Only places you can play. Oh, yeah, and North Commons. I forgot about North Commons. You can play there, too. So then later, as we got a little older, then it was the Cozy Bar. Then you could go downtown and play at the Flame in Minneapolis, which was wait crazy. Minute, Sonny, because wait Sonny, which, which is the place that had the dude asking you if you got a record player? Which, 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 which oh, that, is, that, <laughs> that was um, not the BMW. The, what's the oh. other one? Yeah. Um, right up on the Yeah. But anyway, this guy named, uh, he, he ran the place. And we would always, it was just, this is a whole other band I was playing with. All and right, this band just did not want to practice. So he came in and one, he said, do y'all got a record player? He said, yeah, we got a record player. Said, Why the hell don't you use the learn some songs? You keep playing the same songs. All For a year, we were playing these exact same songs over and over and over. So he finally just fired us, got us out of there. Because no, these guys just didn't want to learn. I'm like, can we practice y'all, please? No yeah, practice. But the yet. wind up was the dude so, came all smooth and hey, you guys got a record player? And then he just explodes on you, dudes. Well, why don't you use it? Why <laughs> don't you play the same song? Why the hell don't you use it? <laughs> so that was my my thing of like, if you ain't going to practice, I don't want to play with you. <laughs> it's that thing. If you don't want to learn the parts, learn the music. And that was a lesson for me to like, okay, enough of that. These guys ain't going to put the work in. Right? They know who they are. I don't put the work in. So. <laughs> right. Some of them are still yeah. around and don't want to practice. Yeah. Right, exactly. All right, let's 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 clear up a Feel couple it. of rumors. Let's clear up a couple of rumors. The first rumor was P Funk meme here. He says, uh, is it true that Gary Scheider trying try to recruit Sonny and Michael into Parliament Funkadelic? Uh you already confirmed it on here, Michael, but I I'm yeah, curious about the story. It, it was in the it was in the kitchen at Bunkers, at Bunkers Music Bar and Grill. Uh, he, he, oh, that's he, right. Yeah, we were back there talking to him. Hey, man, you know, y'all, you two, y'all got to come on and get on the mothership now, you know. And, and right. I, you know, Boy, no, he had some assistant. He's like, take their numbers now, you know. Right. And I was like, Sonny, uh, I don't know if we should get into it, man, because no, I mean, man, there's two ways you can get paid with Parliament, Parliament, fucking yeah. Government. We read the and, stories, yeah, right. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the monetary way. <laughs> yeah. I prefer the money. I don't even. Yeah, it's like I. If, right. if I yeah, because they they tried to um they tried to 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 poach me. I I did a festival with Shaka Khan like in ninety seven or ninety eight, and uh, George was there. A few of those people were there. Like George just sent his daughter to try to talk me into it. George said, right. "You're bad, you know, such and such on the drums." Like. Why don't you come on, you know, with funk and with, with P funk? And I, I'm like, I, I, I don't know. They all seemed a little too freaky for me. I don't think I could do it. Right, right. And they were, you know, yeah. <laughs> Leaving little, little, uh, little toy skeletons everywhere they went. Little skulls and yeah, you know, everywhere they went, there were skeletons that you could find them on the floor. Yeah, I was like, ooh, they into some different uh, <laughs> some hoodoo. They were funky though. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh. <laughs> so that's why they wanted you, because you were too. <laughs> yeah, but no. uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. we, we all have, uh, you know, the option to use our powers, you know, in whatever way we see fit. And I, you know, there's room, but wow. I ne I've never really been a funketeer. Like I'm not. There's people who don't play instruments who know all the words, all the changes. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I did one gig with P Funk at the Glam Slam back in like ninety. I remember. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> and um. You know, sound check was four hours, but you know, I was already used to that because Prince had right. the same thing. Right. Yeah. right. We would just go and go. But they played Night of the Thumposaurus people for like an hour and a half. And that's just <laughs> oomph, 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 oomph. that's all I could play. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I snap and, out, man. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out like I'm asking Blackbird McKnight, like, <laughs> at what point on knee deep do you guys go back? You know, like it's a weird spot. He right. to tell me, said, uh, I'm not sure, man. I'd have to play it to, to let you know. So the whole right. time <laughs> playing, playing knee deep, I'm looking at 
Blackbird, like, let me know when, man. And he was like, right before right. it happened, he, oh, right here, man. I was, <laughs> 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 yeah. right. I was stressing, man. Oh, my. Right. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, so, man. Yeah. All yeah, right. Man. So so that, that rumor is confirmed. <laughs> yes. They, they, right. they tried to poach me, and then they tried to poach both of us. After Gary uh, right. sat in at bunkers and was looking at us and going in front of the stage and giving us the finger and everything, you know, right? Was, I was like, "What does that mean?" He's like, "I guess that's a compliment in the highest order when you and P fuck. If somebody flips you off, it's like you must be playing some serious stuff." <laughs> oh, all right, okay, he likes us. I see. <laughs> We're just all backwards in that world, like it's uh, crazy. Yeah. Oh, you really peed on that? What? What? Is yeah, like, huh? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Right. Yeah, they just got their own way. Oh my I'm not, god! I'm not, I'm not a funketeer. I'm, I'm uh, 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 something else. I don't know what it is, but I'm, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 so God no. bless him. One, God one of the him. questions from one of our listeners pops in, and uh, uh, Terry, Terry, he's asking, oh. "Hey, speaking of P Funk, how did the groove for Billy Jack bitch come about?" Anybody got anything for that? Uh, not really. I mean, it's just, I mean, wow. every day, it was like every day in the office for us, man. I mean, we didn't really, you know, we probably were jamming on something. And Prince was like, hmm. I, yeah, I, let's I, hit you it. Know, I like that, you know, and it probably we kept cooking it until he went, okay, well, let's, let's cut that. I mean, that's how a lot of them happen. Right. I mean, you know, I don't mean to yeah, be lazy. Lie. Point. Everywhere I go, you know, in, on the internet, I'm talking about how, you know, Sonny and I, Basically handed Prince over like several songs. Like he just would walk in, and we'd be true. like jamming on something. And he just, what's this? What what key are we in? What you know? And before we knew it, it was on a record. You know, right? Um, exactly. P control. Yeah. That's one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I think the last one he kind of yanked from us was thirty one twenty one. We were literally just jamming because the engineer was, was trying to get tones. And I saw Prince right. step into the airlock, and he looked. Out where Sonny and I was at, and then he looked at the engineer and was like, put up a fresh roll of tape. I could see him in talking to the <laughs> right. You see the wheels cool, yeah. turning in his head. Right. He did the cool jog over to over to the to the to the strat. Hey, fellas, right. what's this? Well, what are we playing here? You know, what key is this? And before we knew it, it was just oh well, all right. We're the, the title song for we're the record, in. you know, the single, you know, and we were just there visiting, <laughs> you know. Right. Gold so, comes from the most exactly. Unexpected. Yeah, well, he he knew. Yeah, he, yeah, he knew that. He knew Sonny and I were sort of a an endless resource because when we get together, we just that's what we do. We we play. We make a sound. Right. You know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just he could trust that, trust yeah, us just with the music. He knew that we were going to play. Yeah, something he that. When he, yeah, if he heard it, he he's going to like. Yeah. 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 Well, the other rumor. Um, is, you know, I was thinking about, you know, how Prince, you know, I told you about the quote that he had saying that you were a God and that you were one of his favorites, Sonny. And I was like, well, one, you know, why didn't he use him earlier? You know, why did it take him to the nineties to, to, to kind of, you know, to, to tie him in. And I heard a rumor and it was a, that when Andre Simone left uh, for the revolution, you were asked to step in. And, yeah, I was. And and what happened during that process? <laughs> he kept saying, "You're a little overweight, Sonny. I want you to work out." I said, "What do you mean I'm overweight, man? Shut up!" <laughs> you know. And so next thing you know, so I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna take this very serious," you know, because I wasn't eating a hamburger or two at the time. So, of course, um, <laughs> Why not? I just, no, I was getting it in. So I was I was at the Y every day fish. I really I, I must have lost like about fifty seventy five pounds. So wow. next thing you know, I was like everybody's like, man, how you doing? Say, oh, man, I'm getting ready to go with Prince, man. We get ready. I'm getting ready to join the band and everything. He said, didn't you hear? Say hear what? Say he hired Mark. So he hired Mark who? So he hired Mark Brown. I said what? I said where are they playing at? So. I we went, they were playing. Uh, he was, um, they had been, been practicing and he auditioned, um, Vanity Six at, at the Nakarima. 
So I walked up on him and I popped him in the side. <laughs> I just walked him, he had a silver suit on, standing behind the board. And I just walked up right in. Man, why you got me go through all this and then you hire Mark, man? Why didn't you just call me and tell me? <laughs> he was just like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm like, man, no sorry, man. Just tell me. You know, but, you know, me and Mark were cool. I mean, I had nothing with, with him. I mean, Mark's a great, he's a great bass player. You know, and he had a vibe and he was cool. So it was cool for me. I mean, I mean, after I got over that, I was okay. But yeah, and listen, this is also, like, again, true story, because I, I, I think Kirk, I think Kirk Johnson told me that story. That they saw Sonny coming in, uh, coming into the into the bar. And they were like, Sonny, hold, hold, Sonny, where you going, man? You know, he's like, man, is Prince in there? You know, they told me the, the, the exact story that Sonny just told me. Like, <laughs> Sonny crazy. Stop. Doc Prince in the side and said, What's up, man? <laughs> that was hot, man. That yeah. was hot. They said Sonny was about to I came all the way from the north side to the south side and find you. A couple of burger or two. Shoot. You know. Oh, man. That's like that, you did young kids' mess, you know? Yeah. This but get up with people. Yeah. Elena said, I would have been mad and went and had a hamburger. <laughs> 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 no, <that's right. laughs> oh, Big Mac, two of them. But, you know, <laughs> it's all in God's time. No, that's the way I look at it. That's right. So, and also, yeah, and I saw yeah. uh, an interview with Jimmy Jam who said somebody asked him that question because Jam and Lewis were go going singing Sonny's praises on something, and they said, well, "How come Sonny wasn't involved sooner with, with with you know with Prince? You know, once he once he broke." And Jimmy was like. Who wants their their idol and their their mentor? You know, like you got to have your head ready for that, and somebody you revere on that level. It's like to have them in your band. It's he's like you know, Prince had to take a minute. You know, you know, if you don't uh, yeah. just stick a genius like Sonny in your band and not expect things to change drastically. So I think maybe he was fearful that Sonny. I mean, Sonny has his own ideas about music. You know, I mean, he could have been, uh, you know, uh, reticent just for that reason alone. He didn't want conflict. But I think mostly what Jimmy seemed to think it was, was Prince had to be in a certain position in his career before he felt the comfortable, you know, the confidence. Right. To really have yeah, that, I think that's what it was, too, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's okay. a real thing. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's that's. Oh, yeah. that's this 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 one comment that you have starred here, Jeff Page, has got me. <laughs> it says, oh, first off, let me give a shout out to a lot some great people that are here in the chat room. All of these people are fantastic. We got Tony M is in the chat room. Andrew is in the, in the, oh, in the is in here. Uh, Steve Park is in here. Got all these great ah, Steve Park. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but Tony oh, said. Wow. Tony said Sonny was an adapter. Ask him about the tub steak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's up to you, T. I I don't I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't put you I in that have, position, but you oh, no. Take no we were in LA, man. What were we doing out there? I, I can't remember. We were playing. What were we doing in LA? I was really hungry, man. You know so what? We I were, think that was the Beverly Center. Yeah, yeah. It was we the, played uh, somewhere. I can't remember. Where we play? Where did we play at when we were out? There? I think it was the Shrine Auditorium. I think it was one of those like Shrine the Auditorium, VH1 Fashion and Music Awards, where Prince dropped a bunch of panties on everybody, a bunch of g strings with right. uh, on the on the like Carl Lagerfeld had just had a pair of <laughs> panties. Just <laughs> oh my all god! His head. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I was just hungry, man. So there was yeah. a store across from the Beverly Center. Yeah, we took the limo to, to Ross. <laughs> right, right. So I bought the steak, and then I got to the room. And it's like, dang, there ain't no stove up in this month. So I just turned on the water as hot as I could and boiled that mug to perfection <laughs> and ate that mug, and it was perfect. And I told I had my mistake was telling everybody. And so they started calling me Tub Steak Thompson. <laughs> It's called me tub steak, man. 
I know people think that song is like, dude, this is not the end of the world. You ain't got to boil your steak. But, you know, there wasn't no stove, wasn't no, you know, no microwave. You could at least burn it in a microwave, you know. But. <laughs> oh my man said, I right. gotta eat. I'm it wasn't raw. It was gray. But Tony, was said it, yeah, Tony said it came out gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, brother guy. That's all I'm saying. Oh, we will find hey. there, are so many, there are so many stories. <laughs> well, I mean, so, yeah, we, we were out there on the line, man. And, and Kenny yeah. said, Sonny, do you still have the pig nose? Or what, what is this now? <laughs> oh, the, uh, the amp, maybe the, that I was. Yeah, talking. pig nose amp. No, nah, that thing is, God knows where it at is now. No, uh, it's oh, probably okay. been recycled or just buried under the ground somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. I love that thing though. Mm. Yeah. All right, mm. let's let's get another rumor cleared up, but this time for Michael Bland. Um oh, boy. because you know, <laughs> you obviously work a lot with uh with the legendary uh Soul Asylum, uh, which you know, I mean Yo. What, Mm. What a fantastic I love the Mohawk, by the, the way. Mohawk, man. <laughs> yeah. For a little while, Tommy Stinson was, yeah, Tommy Stinson was in the band for a little while. And then Winston, the 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 other brother on the far right, he uh he took over. Right. Tommy had to go back to Guns N' Roses. But I'd be at the airport the night after the the, the you know the for the morning after the gig. And if I didn't have time to get my you know my Mohawk right, sometimes it'd be a little, you know, a little crazy looking. And, You'd be a little kissy, huh? Yeah, I see Dave Perner and Tommy Sorry. looking at me, and they're they're whispering. And Perm says, "What do you call that thing when uh you know uh, what do you call that thing when it when it falls over like that? Black Hawk down." <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, you know, I, it was pretty early in the morning. I don't think I thought it was very funny. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you did. We actually have to have. We have to have a, a, a vote now because we got to figure out if they prefer the mohawk or they prefer prefer the hat. Oh, they prefer the hat. I get asked about the hat. The hat stuff. Yeah. You know, What's the hat mohawk under the hat? Yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, it looked like I, I, I owned a small African country, you know, and uh, <laughs> it, usually, it, was, it, it was either that or I sometimes I'd just go into a She's your queen, do <laughs> a queen. I go into that sometimes. Uh, <laughs> while Sonny's over at McDowell's getting a, a hamburger. Right, right. Exactly. Oh man. oh, man. So here's the rumor. Oh. Okay. Because uh, a lot of people, <laughs> but, but Prince really, really liked uh, Dave Perner. And there is a rumor. That there are not one, not two, not three, but four albums that are in the vault of Jess Prince and Dave Perner and in the vault. One of them is called, um, and they've never been released. They're just kind of just sitting there. There were jam sessions. There was a one called PXP, which is obviously Prince and Perner. That's a hard rock, just just a hard rock just jam. Idea. P2P, which yeah. is a bunch of slow jams. PNP, which is an industrial project, and PP, which is a Chuck Berry tribute. What do you know about the existence of those uh, those albums in the vault? You got to talk about that, Mike. I don't know. Uh, Dave has never... What, my understanding is that those reels of tape that are in the vault that belong to Dave, those were mostly collaborations with Paul Westerberg. That's my understanding. The the, the replacements, the, mm. the replacements. Mm. That's what Dave said he he was doing there. Him and West, he and Westerberg were like working on like you know music together, and uh, you know in Minneapolis is, that's kind of a big deal because both those guys are you know seminal, you know like real like that's the other Minneapolis sound. All you know that that right kind of college rock sort of precursor to grunge. Like that's the other end of it, and uh, you know, both of them would talk to me about how Prince would come over from like the main room and come in the entry and check them out. And you know, this is around the time Purple Rain was out, so Prince would come over there with Chick or whoever, and 
he'd stay for a few minutes and then he'd leave and go back to the main room and like the whole crowd would follow him back into the main room. And so then they'd have nobody to play for basically. So, so that, that rumor is probably disproved because probably they thought the P was Prince when actually it was probably Paul from Paul West. Yeah, Paul exactly. Yeah. yeah. There you go. There's the disproof. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, a spe I'm speculating though. And only because Dave did mention that he did some recording there with Paul. And uh, he's never mentioned collaborating with Prince. I mean, the closest they got to a collaboration is when Prince asked me to ask Dave if he could cover um, uh, Stand Up and Be Strong. Which right. Which we tried with me and Sonny and Prince, but Prince didn't know the song quite well enough yet right. to really get into it. So he did a different version later on. The one that came out on Welcome to America right. is the one, is a, another attempt he had at it. The one Sonny and I worked right. on with him is still in the vault probably yeah right yeah. and speaking of paul westerberg what i found interesting and one of the things i was reading was that you know you guys were let go from mpg in what 96 and yeah. i seen that you had gone in and recorded with paul westerberg in the studio mm -hmm. after you had already been let go what what was the vibe like? i mean first off was your departure from mpg amicable was it you know how was how did that all go down? I mean, I guess that, that's a question for both of you guys. Yeah. Uh, well, which one do you want to answer? To answer? Which it, it just it just fizzled out. <laughs> to me. Yeah, it kind of did. It, it kind of just was like it's over, y'all. So and, and it was cool of, with me. I'm like, it's time for me to move on because then, not too long after that, we ended up in France. <laughs> yeah. So, before the year was up, we were off golf. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. Working with dudes who had been playing with Sting and. You know, like right. So that's cool. you know, I mean, it was. I mean, you know, it was, the writing was on the wall. We had had kind of a uh, early in '96, like in January, we went to Japan, and um, you know, the first night the the gig didn't go so well, and and uh, right. it was a uh, you know partly it was because um, I think they were trying to save money on the carny and 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 uh, like the boating the equipment to to Japan. Like that's expensive. I think they tried to leave earlier right. to save money, but we lost time in rehearsal and we didn't have any days to prep when we got to Japan. So the sound check right. that we was had kind of all we had. And it had been like three and a half weeks. So the first show was not a disaster, but it was it was subpar. And Prince really took right. it personally. Like he like he stopped talking to us for like a week. Wow. You know, yeah. Stop wouldn't talk. Stop, pray, stop praying with us. Stop, you know, asking to hang out like and, you know, within about a couple of days of that, we were like, well, okay, cool. I mean, if that's how you want to act, then that's how you want to act. Right. right? I mean, it was over here. It was like, cool. Yeah. We I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, oh, you know, me, I'm like, like eh. yeah. And so it just kind of, we kind of, the writing was on the wall. Like he was ready to do something else. And I was getting right. headaches every day in rehearsal. And he was writing songs about, I need a, I need a band that, 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 uh, what, what you remember that Sunday? I think Morris found some lyrics in the CUA. He had started writing a song about I need a band. I need a band that you know right. like, you like, can like, have one. When, when I scold when I scold him, I need a band that is I'm like and so I think I've ever seen right. Well that ain't me, you know. That right. ain't us. You know? That's so, not gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, by the time it happened, thing. it was yeah, I don't think anybody was surprised. It was so, time. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, that's, that goes with, and I mean, I, I look at some of the, your, your body of work too. Like I was looking at uh, this one that you worked on together with Nick Jonas, Nick Jonas and the administration. Well, all right. This, oh, right, this, right. this project um, really kind of caught me off guard. I was, I was thinking to myself, cause I heard about the album before it came out and I said, Nick Jonas is having Sonny T and Michael Bland and Tommy Barbarella on the friggin' same album, I was like, this is going to be out of the box. I said, I cannot wait to hear this album. <laughs> and and then I and then I heard it and I was thinking, I, I, I didn't know I, I didn't know how to feel because I kind of felt like, yeah. And, and I, this is no disrespect to the album because the album is really, really good, but I kind of feel like there could have been so much more utilization of you guys on that album. I just kind of felt like it was, I don't know. I don't know how, how I felt about it. It was really, really good. But uh, tell me about your experience with, with Nick Jonas and just kind of working. Cause this is kind of early in, in what he's doing. Well, let me tell the first part because Sonny came in late. I didn't record on the album. 
yeah. at all. That was David Ryan Harris. <laughs> he just hired yeah. me to play. David, yeah, David Ryan Harris was supposed to be on the record and in the band, but who? Uh, let me just say, let me just say, David Ryan Harris is probably one of my favorite dudes of all time because he was in a local band here in Atlanta called Follow for Now, and that dude is off the chain. He is so oh, yeah. right. Uh, no, he's dope. Yeah, he's he's great. He was a fun hang too. But you know, uh, John Mayer decided at the last minute he was going to go back out that year, and. Um, and I get it. David probably wanted to, you know, it's like, well, my friends are going out and I'm getting to know these right. guys, but they, they ain't my guys. So I think he just right. kind of made a made another decision, you know, right as we were getting ready to start taking pictures for this record. So by the Sonny and uh, who was it? It was John Fields. And uh, well, first off, John Fields, all credit goes to him because he's the one who went, you need these dudes. Yeah. If you're going to do this, you need these guys. So John right. Fields, uh, you know, basically told Nick Jonas, like, listen, if you want to go to the next level of your musicality, you're going to start having to hang around people who are great and not just good. So uh, th that that was all John. John is the patron saint of the Minneapolis music scene. I've never seen anybody work so hard for so little. In yeah, he's a bad boy. You know, he'll if you got, you know, talent and some kind of little story going, like if he if he, if, he, if your music resonates with him, He'll, he'll, you know, he'll work with you, you know, if you're close by. I mean, he's, he's really um, uh, a, a kind-hearted person, and yeah, he's very interested in keeping the scene here alive, you know. So yeah, yeah he's super fast in the studio, my right, yeah. God, and a great, a great Man. musician, great bass player. Yeah, and, and can play. Yeah. yeah, he had he and Tommy were in a band called Greasy Meal in the '90s that got started after. Uh, we all got thrown out of Prince's camp. So Barbarella went with Greasy Meal, um, and Sonny and I ended up getting paired off and going to France later that year. Right after doing after uh, right after Randy Jackson uh, from American Idol. Oh yeah, we did a lot of work with Randy Jackson. Oh, That's yeah. right. Yeah, so uh, I forgot about that. But I forgot about Randy that. Was one of the main people who was like, "Hey man, I heard you guys. You know." Y'all out of the kingdom, you know, it's like, I'm working on a new record with Dion Ferris. Are you guys available to record? Yeah. So Nothing. we recorded yeah, a so we effort, yeah, but from, from, from Dion. We cut at the Hit Factory in New York. We cut in Atlanta. We cut in L.A. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, actually, who? what's the guy's name who had been brought in? Van. Van Hunt. Van Hunt had started. Van Hunt. With him. So uh, it was me and Sonny uh, and right Van here. In the studio with Dion right. Ferris, and it was oh my it god, it was incredible, man. And uh, yeah, eventually, it was I think incredible. We, Scott came through and played uh, when we were in New York, I think. Jeff Lee Johnson, uh, Jeff Lee Johnson uh, came uh, play, one of the greatest guitar players of all time, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, he was right. on some of those right. sessions, like this we really had right here. Oh my oh, god, okay. Well, I see you yeah. want to just keep moving, so let's keep moving. No, 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 I'm, I'm just I, you mentioned Jeff Lee, so I had to pull that up. All right. All right. Put on this jungle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, but uh, anyway, so uh, back to the Nick Jonas thing. We we recorded the, the album at uh, Blackbird Studios in Nashville, and um, uh, like David Ryan Harris backed out just as we were about to start taking pictures for the album for the for the artwork, and uh, so John Fields comes to me and Sonny, or no, not me and Tommy rather, and says. Well, who do we get? And me and Tommy look at each other, and it's like, well, there's only one person who can step in at this stage and and take it all the way, and that's Sonny. And uh, John said, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So <laughs> Nick walks up and says, well, what do you guys think? Who should we? You know, I guess he's probably thinking we would get somebody, you know, Slash or some I don't know who, you know, some name brand right. guitar player out there with some other like no, Sonny is the guy, and uh, so. That's how Sonny got in. Sonny didn't even have to audition. He just <laughs> he yeah, he just sent me an app, and I just started yeah. learning all the tunes and getting all the sounds, and yeah, boom, By went to right to LA and started rehearsing. Exactly, we got to um um uh, what is the place called? Uh, center Center Staging is where we rehearsed. Center and Staging, Sonny, and, uh, yeah. Sonny had all his uh all his uh, gear like already fine-tuned he had all the tones he had all the parts 
So, mm. you know, he, he made us look good. So, <laughs> you know, for me, <laughs> Nick just fell in love with Sonny. Nick would sometimes want to go out in the parking yeah. lot, play acoustically. Sonny, come on, man. So him and Sonny right. would go and hit, hit the parking lot. Like, Sonny became the fa the favorite of the three of us. So, <laughs> you know, he, he came last, but he crazy. ended he ended first. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, I got this, this guitar solo. I love it. It was fun. Really fun for me. No, we had we had a great time with, with Nick. But I, I'll say, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, uh, uh, Christopher, because it hadn't occurred to me that the Prince fans were going to expect something in particular from, from him. Exactly. For, or from us, rather. Whereas right. for us, it was like, no, we just play music. So, right. you know, yeah. if it's a comprehensive thing, you know, then, you know, we're, we're, we're qualified and probably know the language. It's our job to, to be versatile and, right. you know, not just funk all day. You know, right. man right. can't live by funk alone. We don't play more than that. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I get that. It might have been a letdown for some of them people, but for us, it was, I mean, that was an incredible tour. I mean, we got yeah. We we got treated it was like really royalty. Incredible. We got treated like royalty during that situation, and and I thought the songs were good, but you know you you uh, can teeter on that edge of being too critical, or you know it's like people yeah, yeah. say they want they want your opinion, but they don't always mean it. You know, yeah, they don't always mean it. Mean it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I you know I had thoughts. Most of the thoughts that I had about things I expressed because I'm pretty direct. As a communicator, oh, yeah. but I also knew that it wasn't my job to commandeer the project and steer it in a direction of my choosing. So, you know, right. I, I feel Absolutely. like I had to balance things. Barbarella came later; like they flew Barbarella out, like second or third day into the the week that we were recording the record. Um, but before that, it was just David Ryan Harris, me, and John Fields, uh, and Nick. So he played. Guitar. I mean, we recorded most of those tracks together, like a live band. So, wow. um, very little overdubbing, and uh, yeah. So, you know, it started out like that. Barbarella came, and then we started to, you know, get a sense for, like, he helped the sound to get, uh, you know, get into a more refined shape, and uh, yeah. And then it was a, it was a couple of months, and then it was time to take pictures. So. I mean, and then Sonny, you know, when, when, <laughs> when, because right when he was doing uh, the administration, like the Jonas Brothers as an act were kind of in this sort of weird zone where, you know, I think they were wow. it's like they had, they had, had gotten to their first plateau, but then they were kind of slipping back down, you know? And um, so uh, what happened late, literally was. <laughs> Um, man, that band got uh, huge, man. It got yes. huge. Yeah, but but during this interim crazy. period, they had to cut back on funding and whatnot, and you know we became too uh, too expensive to afford. So, uh, right. you know, and, and but they kept Sunny though. They got rid of the rest of us. Right. Sunny <laughs> <Sonny. laughs> was like in, <laughs> in, uh, you know, in Santiago, Chile. You know, just playing. Right. Okay, hey, Sunny, get up here, man, and just blazing. You know. <laughs> And the rest of us were sent to home, but it was all right. We did, we weren't mad, crazy, you know. Crazy, <laughs> and, and I saw what, that. Time. What a ride that was! <laughs> yes, uh, Paul Quintana said, uh, "Y'all ever gonna put out funky tunes again? Sample tracks on LP would be dope." And what I happened to find, it just kind of ties into that, is I happened to find this. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, loops. Yes, yep. that's oh fine. man. Called Mike, funky Mike, ass yeah. loops. Michael Van Huffel did that artwork. Yep. And yes, so, but this is actual just loops that people can can take and utilize for for their own. Yeah, work. you can make tunes out of all of this. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people didn't use sure. it the right way. We like we no. we thought we were being innovative by um, including the tempos and the keys, and you could have the the bass and the drums, or the guitar and the drums, or the keyboards and the bass. Like it was kind of like put together your own kit, and uh, yeah, a lot of people just a lot of a lot of Prince fans who didn't make music bought it anyway and just would listen to it like they were listening to a record, you know, so, <laughs> which was crazy to me, you know. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's it's as cost effective as it used to be. There's a lot of sound libraries out there, and um, right, you know, there's a ton I, I mean, of them now. It would, you know, if if I thought it was worth the money, you know, because it's a very tedious process. I mean, coming up with the grooves was easy because yeah. me and Sonny just all we got. I'll be right back. All Sonny and I have to do is get to our instruments, and the music will come. So right. it it was not a problem for having content. Uh, the problem was like the organization of things, and it was it was very tedious. Um, yeah, I mean, so have you ever thought about working with a company like, I guess you know, Sony Acid Loops? They have or whatever they're called now. Right. Uh, you know, th there's so many different libraries and, and things that are out there. I mean, you said it's a tedious process, but I mean, is there anything that is beneficial to to doing that monetarily? I mean, well, is it can be profitable? Yeah. I was I was talking to um us. Uh, a person in in uh, Soul Asylum's manager's office had been doing something with, with a company called Splice, and mm -hmm. I had them talk to Splice on my behalf. I was thinking about doing like maybe a like a a, a drum card or like a uh, you know like a virtual Michael Bland sort of like software package, like where because I know I have a very distinctive way of hitting like the snare. Like some people know it's me on like records that I never told anybody about. They're like I recognize your sound, man. Like nobody hits the snare drum like you hit it. So you know, I know I have an identity in my sound, but um, uh, the best way to share it, I I don't know. I would have to um, I, I would have to be more interested in investing it. I'm not really. That's not where my head is at really right now. Mm. Um, I uh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, well, it's hard to say because you could you could do all the work and still have people not very interested. You know what I mean? It's like it's uh, it's hard to say what would would, would happen in this day and age because sampling is not oh, yeah. the same kind of thing as it used to be. Well, know? no, it's changed a lot now because electronic music and people have different opportunities and people have access. So most yeah. um, musicians exactly. are really love to take those samples and they'll they start tearing apart now they don't like uh, you're you're not considered a brilliant musician if you take michael bland's drums and you just use it you still have to make some adjustments to make it your own right the fact different. sound sure right but your sound is your sound so because you guys have a name I, I believe that with the way technology is now and how people are looking for new music and new beats and new samples, I think it would probably do well just because you stamped your name on it. Yeah, and well, that's... People want pieces of it, even if it's small pieces. Hey, of it. I got you. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. uh, it, well, I guess I don't mind going public about it. It's like we really ended up getting yeah. kind, of a, kind of a raw deal with East West Sound Warehouse. Like yeah. I, I kind of want to sue them because they kind of um, let us. Yeah, we could. Something. We need to get that paper back from them. Yeah, they have a lot of money that they owe us. They moved to digital, and streaming mm -hmm. and all of that wow. with our with 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 our product, and we haven't seen a, mm -hmm. a dime from it since like the late nineties. Ain't, ain't seen a rosebud, nothing. Oh, nope. God. So <laughs> right, I'm, you know, I mean, we kind of we got burned a little bit. And I, you know, we really didn't have the money to go after them, uh, and they're right. a bigger company now, I think, than they used to be. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, so I, you know, exactly. I don't know that, that sour yeah. me necessarily, but it, it's a, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm just, it's not, uh, I'm not as uh, excited about giving away my sound as I used to be either. So, right. I, you know, it's a thing. I'm realizing. Not till I get my album out. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Let me get my album out. You know, let me get my album out. They can do what they want. No. Yeah, I got an album coming out. Yeah, After let me that, make it happen. Maybe. Uh, 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 if you, if you want Michael Sound and Sunny T Sound, go to them. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Right, right. That's yeah, what's I, up. I mean, right, I have a, I have a facility. That's what's up. Record. I can record drums for anybody from right here in in, in you know in. From, mm -hmm. from the comfort of, of my rehearsal space, I you know I can I anybody need some drums on something, you know don't be afraid to get at me. I'm on Facebook, you know I'm I'm in business right. to be in business. So <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I think people, yeah, people awesome. 
about that. Yeah, P Funk Meme was asking about uh, Sonny and Michael. and wondering about uh, if they can get in touch with you guys and get you guys playing. It's like I'm sure they would. Heck yeah. Okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll consider anything. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So with your names it. on it. Yeah, if it, yeah. If it's Gizzard, I can't do nothing with it. If it's Gizzard. Yeah, if it's Gizzard, you know, you can't. Because your name is on it. If it's and Gizzard. There's a, there's a certain amount of, What's you know. Gizzard? I'm sorry. <laughs> if you it's know. Gizzard, we can't get involved with it, man. <laughs> It's I've already tried else before. Yeah, you know how you got the good parts what? of the chicken, like you know the. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, if it's gizzards, God. if it's gizzards and feet, we can't mess with it, man. <laughs> Wait, I need, is, you know, I need some thighs, you know, maybe a leg. I've had those sessions before. Yeah. One, exactly. two, three. Plug in. Gizzard. About fifteen <laughs> minutes later, you all plug it and you already way back home. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we can't just have our name on any. Any old no, way. you can't do that. It's, it's and it's not about disrespect. It's about yeah. respect of the music. That's all. It that's is. absolutely yeah. yeah. So oh, don't come, Lord. don't come crazy. You know. But we're down for anything. Yeah, have your mess together at least. We're down for if you're going to approach us. Um, oh my. Yeah. I want to. Brand new baby. Oh. Oh. Well, they are. Yeah, Ooh. dude. Who built that? Yeah, Vinny and Joy were from up in New York, man. I went up there and played the Blue Note a few weeks ago. And um, they oh, built this for me. They've been out. Uh, you know, Victor Wooden hooked me up with them. So it's like, I'll be using that on the session tomorrow. It sounds cool. Dope, man. All right. Yeah. Can you show that again? Can you put that on center? Yeah. 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 yeah we need to. We need to put this. Yeah, yeah. Now they really want to see it, Sonny. Yeah. Make, make your big screen here. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> let's see. Let's see the head stop. Yes. yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. There you go. All right. Ain't that right. dope? Yeah. Just beautiful, man. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at my TV set. Yeah, and, and how does yeah, it sound? It's, it's beautiful, man. Yes. Oh man, sound is so so. Sunny, well, I can't do it out here. It's not. Would, would you let Would you let me play it? <laughs> I'm a bass player too. So yeah, if you can play, <laughs> it's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I still, I still have my Warwick Dolphin, my other Warwicks, and my Fender Jazzes, my Martin Acoustics, and well, but this is I've been playing that Warwick Dolphin for thirty something years now. That's right. Yeah, and it's hard to let it go because yeah. it's just like it's like part of my hand, you know. Yeah. But I just since I've been playing that, it's just like, ooh, Lord. Oh, and the sound just here. Yeah, it's man. Like, it's dope. like you're Lucille. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you exactly. name it, Sonny? What what do you, have you have you aimed that bass yet? <laughs> no, Gargamel. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I haven't named it yet. <laughs> I haven't named it yet. I gotta I gotta work on that. It's probably gonna be something uh, very spiritual, I think. I All gotta right. think about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what we got here, uh, Michael. You had actually participated in the chat room, and you indicated that you guys are gonna be dropping a new single soon. Tell us yeah. about this. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, but to get to it, like, do you want to go through the rest of the rigmarole first? Do we like, want to do this it... announcement right now? We'll work well, our way up to it. I mean, we're at the fifty-minute mark, basically. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's let's, let's it. Let, me, okay. let me hold on. Let me let me let me let me pull it up. All right, because okay, pull uh, the thing up, man. Because yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, all right. You guys ready? I guess everybody's ready for this announcement because uh, y'all y'all gonna know. Jeff just sent this to me, so uh, here we go. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Here's the graphic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you it. There all it right. Is. Boom. Yes. Okay. All right. So let, let me start with the fact that um, uh, let me start from a personal perspective. First off, I already told you, Sonny's the closest thing I have to a brother in, in this world. Um, I, yes. I got three older sisters, so I I didn't have any. I don't have any biological brothers, but um, and I, I also let me also add that uh, the first time I saw Pierre and Lewis, Sonny, when he came to Bunkers to see us play, you uh. Right. You went on break, and I still I was I stayed up on the stage talking to him. He was like, "Man, 
when we were when we were younger, man, we thought Sonny came from outer space, man. He just he just had so much more talent than everybody else, and you know, and he he uh, he had this the sort of unconventional way of of approaching music. Like we had not experienced anybody like like that, and um, you know, we kept talking, and he's like, "Hey, uh, you know," he he said something to me like, "By the way." You know, it's like how y'all play together. I think y'all came together, came came to Earth in the same pod, man. Like I, you know, like he decided that I. It's the same know, pod. That's all I like fear. Yeah, he said. I think you two cats came together in the same pod. You know, and uh, you know, and it's like the yeah, the symbiosis between Sonny and I was immediate. He came down and sat yes. in his bunkers, and we played Chameleon. Uh, Chameleon. That's the day I fell out. The first time I went there, yeah. it, it fell off like, the what? stage. Right. Well, come on, Sonny. Don't go right to the <laughs> okay. after after funking for like 10 minutes. But you know, right. they were like, Well, what should we play? And Sonny said, go, 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 do, 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 do. And we just kind of launched into it. And that's not the easiest song to play. Um, because right. like certain like where like the bars are uneven at some point, and like you know, but somehow. Sonny and I just played the thing down like we had been playing it our whole lives together. And that was like, crazy. We just locked immediately. Yeah. It was like, where have you been all my life? Wow. You know, like that was the moment when Sonny and I started Absolutely. playing. Absolutely. And, wow. um, you know, um, I often feel like uh, there's something about my connection with Sonny and Prince's connection with Sonny. Like there was a very specific energy when we played together, the three of us. You know, yeah, and uh, I think that I think Sonny is the conduit. Actually, I think that Prince had a certain kind of relationship with Sonny, and I had a certain kind of relationship. But it's like I don't know. It's like you put the three stones together, and you get something else. Right. I, I don't know how else to really explain it, but um, From the Undertaker. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, which is yeah, you get. I, I just loved him playing guitar anyway. Just yeah. You know, because I mean, when he—I mean, it's cool. He had to had the, the great, the big band too. You know, but when he really just when everything was open and he could just play, things yeah, started coming out of him I never heard before. Right, because he didn't have crazy. to explain anything to us. Uh, we both have right. perfect pitch. We have perfect pitch. Sonny and I both have perfect pitch. So he could start in any key, and we knew where he was at. If he was playing, we already party, know where he's going. Yeah, I, he's already you know moving his body like. In the way he's gonna, you know, he's counting the tempo, or, or you know, or tapping his foot, or whatever. So he wouldn't have to right. say anything to us, you know. When we go on those sort of just wild tangents musically, it just was like the music did all the talking. It was just that, you know. And I think, um, you know, we came close to doing it for real. We actually, we went to Los Angeles one weekend. And the intent was to play at the House of Blues on Sunset, right? And kind of debut the trio, um, but um, instead we shot the video for Peach, <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. Prince decided, nah, it's not the right time to do this. So, right, you know, we didn't really make. It. <laughs> yep, that's right. So, that's uh, right. Yeah, but anyway, I, I we got the gold numbers, man. Uh, man, it's it's all this kimchi I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this event, I felt like you know when uh, the Diamonds and Pearls box set came out, like we really missed an opportunity to try to do something real for the fans, for ourselves, even you know. Right. But but I'll say also that you know I got. Uh, I mean, I guess you could call it control issues. I just, I'm, you know, I'm very much these days. I like to be in in charge of the content and 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 the quality level of things I'm involved in. It's not worth it to me anymore to take instruction from just to go who, play. Uh, yeah, who are yeah, just just to go play. <laughs> like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have my say. And Sonny has the same standards mm -hmm. I got. And I'm not pointing fingers Absolutely. or saying anything about anybody else who's tried anything, but I know how I want to do things. And it's not worth it to me to just kind of go through the paces of of someone else's, you know, uh, mm. uh, uh, vision for these things, you know? 
Everybody's got their own ideas about how to do it. And uh, I've been kind of laying low and staying out of it because I, I just really was, wasn't sure how much I wanted to contribute to this thing. Uh, you know, I, it, it's, right. you know, it's my legacy on the one hand, but on the other hand, you have to always be thinking ahead and moving forward in this business, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, so I didn't want to open my life up to this sort of touring tribute oriented scenario. And I'm not, I'm still not sure how I feel about it, but this is, uh, I, I missed Sonny. I hadn't got to play, play with Sonny in a long time. Yeah. We haven't played in a while. And, uh, and also I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people who've had their chance to have their say, and they've, they've tried and, and, and had various results. I'm like, you know, it's, it's time for me to see what we can really do, not just for ourselves, but for the fans, like they need to witness something special. Cause I'm again, I'm not calling anybody out, but there's various levels right. of entertainment out there when you start talking about Prince and you know mm -hmm. what people have to offer. And you know, it ranges yeah. from the excellent to the curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. It is sure. A true. good friend of mine has been in, in my ear for the better, well, for years, saying, what, what is going on with you and Sonny, man? Uh, it, it G Sharp. It, man, y'all don't know who y'all are, man. You don't know who you are to the public. You don't know who you are <laughs> yeah, we see that mess. What you, what you guys need yes, to do, do is just, listen, just do one hit and just settle the score and let them know where this really comes from. You mm. guys were there. You were in it. There's people who were in it within, you know, 2,000 miles of Prince you know, out there representing. But you guys are the originators. You were there, you know, like he leaned on us to basically get through that slump that he went through in the late 80s. Absolutely. In the 90s. He had to he had to figure things out, you know. And uh and he did that with us, you know. So G, you know, always irrepressible and just telling his truth was like, listen, I'm sick and tired of all these, you know, he used various words like yo. <laughs> You know, and just you, like they're gonna, they're gonna keep doing what they're doing, but you, they'll for one night you can shut everybody up, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, and I, I was like, yeah, 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 you know, you know, for for years, but um, uh, I guess I found myself somewhat provoked in a good way, after sort of the estate and everybody kind of just didn't do anything, you mm -hmm. know, for the diamonds and pearls box set. And let me also say, I've been waiting for that box set you know, to come out for, I mean, whatever they started talking about it. I'm like, okay, now people are going to really understand. And and again, I've said this many times before. If you were with Prince musically for any length of significant time, you were almost a genius yourself because geniuses oh, yeah. don't run with normal people. They run with people who can run with them, you know? And right. so, I I mean, I, I, I don't mean any shade to anybody who has come before us or after but we did our own thing you know uh, we, we did. supplied him with a thing that he couldn't get from from anywhere else and i guess you could say the same thing about the revolution but you know for all intents and purposes they've never had to fight for press they've never had to fight for attention they want to do something on tv about involving prince call the revolution they want to do like nobody calls us no, right. people pay us no mind, and I don't. I'm not going as far as to say like it's something racial, uh, because to be you know, the factually, they took the rocket ship to the moon with Prince. We didn't do that. They saw a level of right. success that we didn't. But we also benefited right. from coming later in his career when he decided to mature and he needed us specifically right. for something. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's uh, bring a different style of music. Bring yeah, more harmonic he, content to yes. the music and more funk, you know. Exactly, more fun. He was interested in going back to his roots, and you know, of his own admission, he's like, "I love the revolution, but what what that was was something cold. It was cold, and it was electronic, and that was the purpose. That was what he was after at the time, right. you know. And that's what he right. wants. But you know, they get their flowers, and I'm not saying they don't deserve it. But you know, we we did do something. You know that was harder to do. He was already on the up uh, on the upstroke when when the revolution happened. He was coming. Mm -hmm. We we arrived at a point where it was like he has to re envision. He had to re regroup. Right. He had to re reinvent the wheel there a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's that's harder when the industry is trying to 
you know, trying to push you towards the exit and you got more to say. So, you know, it's, I think that, um, I mean, I guess I'm just saying, I don't think we ever really got the credit, but that DVD, that DVD, if you've seen that DVD from 1992, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that pretty much, you know, that, 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 that cuts it right there. That separates the men from the oh, boys, yeah. right. you know, cause, and that was an early gig. I watched that DVD and I know what happened later. That was one of the first gigs we played as a band together. That band only got mm. better and better as the year went on. As time um, is right. So we were so you know, tight. It's yeah. Crazy. And, and, and so in a way, it's like it's like I wish they would have chosen a concert from later. But um I remember asking Kirk about it, and he was saying there was a gig from either like Earl's Court or somewhere in London. He was like, That's the one that we wanted to do, but I don't think there was a I don't think it was multi-track. Uh, or something to, to, to that. Uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it's probably just so. But two. yeah, even even as as fresh and 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 uh, young as we are in that glam slam performance, it's 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 so hot. The band is so tight, mm. and and Prince is so happy. I mean, you can see it on his face. You can. It's like his spirit is different. Yeah. Like yeah, the new power generation came in and. We may have wiped out a lot of that stuff that a lot of other fans were there for, because it things weren't all dark and murky and weird anymore. Things got very straightforward, right. and like either you can hang or you can't. You know, you, you know what I mean. And I think that's that's what this DVD exemplifies. You know, and um, you know, even Quest Love, who's not a fan of Prince's later uh, music, had to give up the ghost and say, "Well, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really wasn't expecting." I think he said something to the effect of. Uh, you know, they should have made that live record like the the real record or something like that. Like he was that impressed with it that you know he was yeah, sorry right. he slept with it. He slept on that era. I don't know if he's going back and listening now or not, but um, you know, it's uh <laughs> all you gotta do is put that DVD on and all questions will be answered. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do you I agree, agree, Jeff Page? I agree. agree. Two hundred and there's that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. that's that. And, and that's that. And so the, anyway, <laughs> moving on, we got this. Uh, I just I said, Sonny, we need to reclaim the mantle for ourselves, you know, and and we need to set set the watermark, reset the watermark where it's supposed to be at. So for right. one night only, you want to put the thing up while I'm while, while I'm revving up. Uh, there it is. One night only. Uh, that'll be Saturday, April twentieth. Uh, and uh, by the way, yeah, uh, uh, Sonny and I we're putting out a single, and. Uh, the name of the act is Brothers. As you can see, the BR are in parentheses, and then you have Brothers, but you also have right. Other, which is, is is furthering the myth that we are actually from outer space. And not one of you, but <laughs> one, of you one of us. <laughs> um, That's right. And uh, uh, along with us will be uh, the the uh, the incomparable Levi Caesar Jr. on guitar. Yep. Yes. Uh, the sexy enchilada, uh, sexy enchilada, Tommy Barbarella will be with us. Um, Tony M is going to be coming. Um, we oh, yeah. approached uh, Stokely. I'm not sure Stokely is going to be able to make it, but uh, we talked well, to Stokely. Uh, we also, um, the Steels are going to be joining us. Um, and, yeah, oh, hey, listen, it's going to be hot as yeah, It's going to be crazy. Man. I kid you not. It, it's a uh, Saturday, April twentieth, at the Uptown Theater, and uh, obviously the eve of Prince's passing. Uh, but um, we wanted to do it at a time when a lot of fans would be coming into town anyway, and you know who wouldn't want right. to miss this because this is as close as you're going to get to uh, 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 any kind of you know NPG reunion of the original, the the like the first round, uh, you know. So this is as close as you're going to get to a a, a a reunion, as as I can tell, at least for the time being, because I don't have any other plans to to do this. And also, Sonny's very busy during during the the spring and summer, so we're, you know the opportunity yeah. may not come again for quite some time. And uh, the Uptown Theater is in is in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was yes, like yeah, Minnesota, twenty nine hundred, right off Lake Street. Yeah. So, so in, 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 in a lagoon, yes. Um, 20, 
April 20th, Uptown yes. Theater. April 20th, Uptown Theater. Yeah. Michael Bland. Yes, but also it's, uh, it's um, I mean, as you see, it says celebrating Prince's life and the music that inspired him. So it's not, um, it's not like we're playing Prince's music all night. We're playing, you know, music that Prince liked. Prince never, you know, he never did play all night and not, you know, give homage to somebody or something. Somebody that he loved. Yeah, yeah, like he always liked to play covers, you know. That's why he liked coming down to Dr. Mambo's combo so much. We played a lot of music that, that right. he knew and he loved, you know. Um, so you know, I I think it's it's fitting in spirit, and um uh I, I agree, you know. I mean, we'll give you you'll get your get wild and you'll get your you know, uh, you know, uh various uh you know, various I don't wanna I don't wanna let too much out the bag, but you know, you'll get some of what you know. From Prince, you'll get some of what you know just from 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 musical history. So you know, it's a. I, I feel like it's going to be a a a, 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 a It's going to be dope. Uh, to remember. Uh, I, I'll just say that. Special. Yeah. For those of you Playing with my friends know. again. You know, it's been so That's long. Right. You know, it's been so long, man. All right, and just and just for just a second, Jeff Page, uh, yeah. I want to make sure that everybody knows this. This is an exclusive announcement that you are hearing right here on Funkatopia. I see some people saying it's not even on Uptown's website yet. This is the official we, announcement for right now. This is the announce. We, That's we what uh, I was getting ready to say. Yeah, it's this real. Is, we go online tomorrow morning at uh, 10 in the morning, I think. We, uh, we, uh, we, the, the internet, uh, we, we start announcing that way. But we wanted to do our, our announce announce right here with Funkatopia and Christopher and Jack. Right. So and, and we greatly and and we also have a pre-sale code for you guys. The pre-sale happens at 10 o'clock, and that's going to be on Ticketmaster. And in order to get that, you have to have the pre-sale code, which is fans, F-A-N-S, fans. So you got to have that pre-sale code. You're going to go to Ticketmaster and you will look it up there. And you'll be able to find it. And the pre-sale code is FANS. This is the official announcement. April 20th, Uptown Theater in Minneapolis. Michael yeah. Blunt, Sonny Thompson, Levi Caesar, Tony M., The Steels, Tommy Barbarella. I mean, yeah, come we're, on. We're, we're, trying to, we're talking to Eric Gales right now about joining us also. But uh, we'll see. I'm not yeah, sure, sure he can make it. And, and, you know, and the lineup might still change. We're talking about two months from now. So, you right. know, we're still, you know, we may get even... You know, we've got some people reaching out to other people. You know, nothing I can really speak right, on right. right now. Like the the steals just confirmed, like yesterday or or the day before. So, you right. know, we've had some things moving around. I'm not, yeah. I, what's going to happen with Stokely? It's hard to say. But um, you know, also um, another um, uh, artist that lives in Minneapolis, who uh, Barbarella and I have been uh, been working with. Her name is Chastity Chastity Brown. Uh, she's also going to be joining us, and uh, you know she's got a whole other uh, thing happening. I just wanted to to use people that um, that I think are real real artists, you know, and um, they don't necessarily in, have to be a part of, uh, yeah about the Purple Kingdom. I mean, people have a music Minneapolis musicians. A lot of them have uh, a, a lot of originality to them. They don't. We don't all sound the same up this way, so. I, I'm really excited for Chastity. Chastity had a lot of music on. Um, uh, you remember a, a, a TV show on the OWN Network? It was called Queen Sugar. Queen Sugar, like a oh, lot. Oh yeah, of, a lot, yeah. Uh, a lot of Chastity. Chastity has a lot of music in that show, you know. And she's got. I know she's got a a strong like overseas following as well. And you know, she's just. I just love her to death. I think she's she's just. So talented and 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 so honest uh, with how she approaches her music, and uh, I asked her, and she said she'd love to do it. Um, yeah, also uh, you know, and I would be uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, our local favorites, Margaret Cox, uh, oh, G Sharp, Margaret. and uh, and JB from the Routine, uh, oh. they're all going to be on on too. You know, we, we kind of make it a it's sort of a family affair, really. You know, I didn't just want right. to honor people who. You know, managed to you know, to make it to the large marquee. I mean, there's a lot of people with a lot of talent in Minneapolis that get no dap whatsoever. Mm. So, 
you know, we we're trying to to just kind of honor the the range of talent we have in the city as well as as Prince because he's a product of the city, you know. Right. So is is Margie going to do standing at the altar or uh, or Hey You or any of those unreleased tracks that she's got sitting uh, in there? Yeah, standing at the altar, and she'll probably do that one. But she's also going to be doing, you know, uh, I know a place. To do 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 do. do. <laughs> you know, Margaret can sing anything. Margaret yeah. was was one yeah, of yeah. his favorite singers. I remember when yeah, she was yeah. recording. Uh, she was recording the MC Flash record, and I was that record is 19, amazing, man. And I'm sitting on the on the on the couch in front of the console in Studio A, and Margaret is singing. Like she's just singing, like singing her butt off. And then she stopped. She's like, oh, wait, I don't know what to do here. And uh, Prince stopped the tape and he was like, well, okay, uh, do you want to try something? Do you want? She's like, oh, wait a minute, let me try this. See how you like this. And so he ran the tape back and then he, uh, uh, then Margaret sang something else. And is, you know, I was like, oh, crazy. Man. You know, she's, she's one of the greatest, man. I'm sorry, I just have to say it. Yeah. Margaret is the, is the white Shaka Khan. Narada Michael Walden saw her singing with, with the combo, and I saw him say it with his mouth. He said, that's the white Shaka. Then <laughs> 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 he tried to corner Margaret and talk to him. I think Margaret just thought he was some creep because she was like, yeah, okay, all right. I'm like, you're Margaret. Do you know who that is? <laughs> you know, I know. Who is it? Uh, you know, it's she, it's God Michael. bless Margaret. She's just, she's just, many, just Minnesotan to her heart. She is she has no yeah. respect for persons, and you know she all she knows is us. Like Sonny used to say, somebody yeah. asked Sonny, "Oh, hey, do you know Sonny?" Sonny was like, oh, "Man, uh, all I know is us." Sorry, you know, <laughs> well, all I know is us. I, I it was it, actually Nick Jonas asked Sonny. He, I said, "Play it more." Something we were doing, play it more like uh, that Kelly Clarkson song. But it's like Sonny said, "Who?" <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. Right. Hey, so he said, I, I never heard her. Is, is she funky? <laughs> and, and he, he almost fell on the floor. And, and he said, he said, no, Sonny, she's not funky. He said, well, Sonny said, oh, well, no, I, I just know us, man. So uh, uh, <laughs> no, I don't know her. I, I, I just know us. Oh, her. us. <laughs> oh my word. So let me while we're on the subject of this, this event. And also the song, the song I wrote, <laughs> really, I wrote this song that, that right. we dropped. The song is called Brother also. We, we, the, the act is me and Sonny, we're brothers. But the song title is Brother. And I wrote it thinking about Sonny and how much fun we used to, we had on the road during those years when we were working together all the time and, you know, right. and eating, eating uh, two entire ducks on the Champs-Élysées. And having the French, you know, <laughs> and we just, we just, you know, we, 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 we were undaunted. You couldn't, you, we couldn't be embarrassed. We were and just were out there, right? Yeah, in our we, we clothes, eating duck and just, and just clowning. We didn't care, you know. So I, I had some of the best times of my life with Sonny, and I wrote this song. Me too, sing, man. You know, and um, so, Sir. you know, I don't, uh, and, and um, uh. The lead guitar player and also a good friend of mine, Ryan Smith from Soul Asylum, started mm. a label recently called High Tension Records, right? And um, I, we had started talking about, you know, trying to do something. Like uh, I asked him, I said, "Are you you just signing rock and roll bands, or or can I get signed as an artist?" And he's like, "Yeah, man, I, you know." He's like, "No, we can we can do <laughs> rock and roll." And uh, so I, you know, I sent him a couple of ideas, and one was. This demo I had, had had put together, this song called "Brother," and it's very much in the spirit of like, um, you know, like uh, friendship songs, like two of us," you know, by the Beatles, or like Nielsen, like "People Let Me Tell You About My Best Friend," like that sort of thing, like buddy music, you know, like, like war, you know, like mm. that sort of that sort of vibe. And um, yeah, baby brother, yeah, exactly. So it's more of that sort. Oh of yeah. Vibe. Uh, and it really, you know, it's a it's pretty much a true to life, you know, like just a. Uh, it's like I, I'm glad to know you, Sonny. I love you, man. I, you oh know, yeah. I don't, and I imagine too, what my life would have been like if man. I had never met Sonny Thompson. I mean, it's, it's that's the way I feel about you, man. Yeah. All so the drummers in the world that I play with, they look up to him. All. 
Yes. Every last wow. one of them that I know. So, Every last one of them that are playing with major acts that I know. It don't matter where they're at. They look up to him. It's just crazy. <laughs> Uh, that's really crazy. That's nice, but uh, uh, you know, that's I, uh, you know, like any any serious musician knows where their where their pitfalls are and where their strengths are. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, you de-emphasize oh, yeah. what you're bad at, and you put forth what you're good at, and you know, you try not to, you know, make it cause any trouble. But um, um, <laughs> right. The situation with high tension records is basically, you know, they're they they what they're interested in doing is the right thing to me. Uh, you know, and um, we we're kind of doing this single as a kind of a trial run just to see how how business works out. And we may come with a full length record, you know, by the end of the year. So it depends on what Sonny and I right. have time to do and what we're inspired to do. You know, we have to let exactly. the spirit move when it's music. You got to listen to your spirit, you know. Right. Um, yeah, right. But, but what I like about them is oh, they're yeah. dedicated. High Tension Records is really, uh, you know, their their mission is to bring more light to you know new music in minnesota you know and uh you know it's not a you know it's not just like uh you know an ineffective indie like ryan smith is hooked up with uh who did he say uh the uh the label group and and virgin music group like virgin is doing the distribution wow. for yeah, his yeah. label so this wow, is you know yeah, it's, yeah. while it's a modest effort it's it's we've got real backing for this thing so uh, you know, if uh, Sonny's coming over to help me finish the song tomorrow, and hopefully we can get it done yeah. in time to have CD singles available at the show, and then maybe, you know, uh, like a streaming, you know, situation. Like we're we're playing catch up at this point. It just kind of everything just started moving really oh, fast yeah. just a little while ago. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get this thing done. But um, also, uh, uh, High Tension Records is releasing uh, a, a guy who's a a dear friend of mine. Uh, Mark Malman. I don't know if you know anything about Mark Mark Malman and the Minneapolis music scene. He's he's uh he's incredible, and he's putting out his the his the single from his new record is coming out on March March first. Uh, it's called uh, "See My Own Ghost," and uh, High Tension Records is really you know getting behind that, and they're gonna you know they they you should start seeing things about it uh, sooner than later because we're sure. almost at the end of the month, but. Wow. Uh, you know, so we're really excited to see what can be done. This is kind of a trial trial run. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we're taking a chance on each other. So yeah. Oh, yeah. hopefully the, the beneficiary will be the fans. And, you know, who knows what this could lead to. Somebody suggested that we do this once a year. And I'd be cool with that if, if you know, if we can make time for that. I, you know, I think this is the kind of undertaking that it's it's not a Herculean effort, but it's a lot, man. Like I'm used to be a mu being a musical oh, yeah. actor, but I'm not used to all the business that goes with right. putting on an event like this. And and you know, it's it's, it's a lot. Uh, I'm having to learn a lot very fast. And uh, luckily, I have a uh, Jeff Tobby from Mid America Talent partnering with us on this uh, this event. He got the Live Nation for us and and got the deal going. And uh, you know, I mean, the capacity is seventeen fifty, so. We can use every everybody in the room, you know. <laughs> anybody oh, yeah. who's thinking about coming, come on. Right it up. You know, and I can't tell you <laughs> when you're gonna be able to see this again. It's I mean, I, I haven't played with Levi in so long, man. I'm so excited. Man, man. you know, and he's still Barilla, crazy yeah. funky. Man, he's so yeah. good still. It's it's unbelievable. Be, if you miss it, you're you're gonna you're gonna be sorry. Yeah, and a lot of people are asking about streaming options, and uh, I know that Jeff and I were talking, not Jeff Page, Jeff uh, Management. It's uh, Jeff Tobby, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, that may be something that they can try to put together because they want it to be available to as many people as possible. So there's some way to kind of make some type of pay-per-view type of scenario where, you know, it can be streamed. Possibly. I, I know the lot. audio is correct. Audio got to be correct for that. So that's yeah, I don't. I don't know. Sometimes a lot of people try to capital. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people try to capitalize on their first attempt, and I, I found that to be, it's a little, it's it's dicey. It's tricky. I don't, I don't like yeah, yeah. going out there with an unproven model, and right. and inviting everybody to hear, you know, uh, potentially our mistakes. I don't like the idea of that. You yeah, know, right. Like if it's going to be pay per view, yeah. then it's going to be. Neither. It's gonna be it's gonna be tested and approved, and 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 you know ready for consumption. This is 
a wild right. experiment that I just that started out being a completely different thing. Sonny and I were going to do this gig with Corey Wong and Fafu the Great, uh, uh, a guy who used to be my oh yeah uh, electronic tech for Prince, who uh, moved to uh, to Brooklyn, and um, but uh, so but that's a thing we're going to try at another time. It wasn't the type of thing you do in front of seventeen hundred people. It'd be that's more right. appropriate than like the Dakota or a smaller venue here in Minneapolis. Because it that thing was that situation was going to be completely different. Like imagine Prince's songs interpreted uh, from an instrumentalist perspective with a DJ, like flipping the script. Like that's a real, that's going to be something. Yeah, yeah. That we'll get into. Right. But, yeah, I, I played the boom note. I played went up there and played with DJ Logic, and we did something right mm -hmm. similar yeah. to that. Because you know he started jazz hip hop, you know, and I do. Yeah. That gig was dope. Yeah, <laughs> the gig was hot. Yeah, it was a dope gig. It's so, tough. The music business. I love that you're doing that because everybody, everyone who's listening, all you creatives, you got to understand what Michael is, Bland is trying to tell you guys. There's the creative hat and there's the business hat. We can there's we a can business hat ideas and and crazy stuff all day long. But when you put the business hat on. You got to start thinking. Hey, is this really feasible? Is this really logical? Is it tested? Well, you got to start thinking in absolutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and it's correct. It's variables. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. unfortunate. I, you know, I, I think that Corey had to back up because he's got something he's got to do with the Metropole Orchestra over in Europe, and wow. uh, so it kind of left. You know, and then the gig got moved from like the fine line to the uptown. It's like, well, wow, we gotta. I and we had to rethink this. It's like I gotta I gotta call in the the you know the the A team the other A team you know I gotta right. call my other friends and we gotta do something that's that's worthy of having seventeen hundred and fifty people you know show up to see it and you know it's um uh, I mean now that we got the steals it's like the sky is the limit who knows how intense this is gonna get because wherever they go it's yeah 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 you know, I got a yeah, question yeah. about the possibility of uh, some of these tracks showing up. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's sure. Why possibility. Yeah, why oh, no doubt. <laughs> possibility. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No. absolutely. No, right. I'm sure it's an absolute. There's going to be something, a few of them off of there, maybe. Yeah. And also, anyway. Yeah, and they, crazy. You have you did so much of the lead. You did pretty much all the lead vocals on this album, but I haven't seen anything you know album wise from you. For uh, it's just it's it's like you because you kill. I mean, it's just it's amazing to me that <laughs> you're, you're, like, uh, it's unreal. I would just love to see some of this. Well, stuff. I'm working on material now. I've just been getting comfortable with my own skin and singing in key. <laughs> so, as you know, it's just it's a physical, it's a spiritual thing too. You know, to mm -hmm. put yourself out there and just be butt naked like that. You know, so it's uh, I'm comfortable now. I don't even care. I'm ready to jump off the cliff. And, you know, hang glide, whatever. Now, so right, <laughs> you definitely will be hearing something from me soon. Oh, that's there's fantastic. no doubt about it. Awesome. Yeah, and, and for those who happen to miss the announcement. You know, I I don't know where you know, where you've been, but what's fantastic is that on April twentieth in Minneapolis, they are going to be playing. Again, this is this April twentieth. That's a Saturday. They are going to be playing, and I I erroneously said tomorrow. It's actually the tickets go on sale Thursday uh, on Ticketmaster at ten a.m. and that's a pre-sale, and you can use the code fans F A N S to get tickets to this event. That's going to right now the current lineup is as it's lighting up right now, Michael Bland, Sonny Thompson, Levi, Tony M and Tommy Barbarella and the steals. And it's going to be at Uptown theater in Minneapolis. And Oh my gosh, it's, this is going to be an event that you do not want to miss at all costs. I, I, I've just got to, I've got to try to figure out where my, where my Delta, points are and <laughs> just well, make, let, let me, let me, let me <laughs> i got a lot of information to share man uh a, a really great local artist named nerdy is opening the show oh, also. i don't know if you guys know about yeah it so, was a celebration the last one mm -hmm. nerdy is going to be opening the show he's he's going to go on at eight we're going to go on at nine uh no rosie Gaines will not be with us uh as you know, after no, i wish i spoke to uh 
her, her daughter. And uh, Rosie is basically retired from the music business, from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. She's just hanging out with her grandkids yeah, she's and enjoying her life. Because, And I get it. Everybody, you know, this, this business is rough, man. It, it'll chew you up and spit you out. It'll, you know, it'll, it'll rob you of your dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's, I get it. I mean, not everybody is cut out for this, you know, and, um, you know, Rosie was, was in That's it true. for a long time, you know, yeah. she's seen, seen high points. She's seen low points like the rest of us. And I'm just saying it's a, it, the music business is unkind, you know, like it, yeah. it, it'll, it'll beat it out of you, man. I mean, I think sometimes oh, yeah. I'm, I'm fortunate yeah. to have been, uh, you know, more of an accomplice and, and a sideman sausage because being in the spotlight, it's like what it does to your head, what it does to your, you know, uh, the, the way you have to move through the world. It's like I saw, you know, I watched Prince all those years and I'm like, I'm glad I'm not him. Just people constantly <laughs> reaching for you, clamoring, you know, right. ask, you know, asking all the time and this and that. Like people are never satisfied. Whatever you whatever you give them, they will gladly take, you right. know. Right. And you know it's it's like how do you manage to keep yourself you know yeah how do you keep yourself you know while everybody constantly wants from you it's like it's not it's not all it's cracked up to be especially for somebody like Prince who really was in it for the right reason like he's he was in music because he loved music you know mm -hmm. uh, I I was uh, actually talking talking to somebody earlier today about the fact that um. That he, oh, I was, actually, it was a conversation I was having with my wife about uh, an interview I saw Prince talking about. He realized, like, when he was like 15 or so, like, whatever I do in life, I'm going to have to earn it. So mm -hmm. he just decided, like, if yeah. I'm going to put the work in, it, it better be for something I love, you know? Absolutely. Right. There's a lot and to that whole we're reason. We're blessed to do that. We are blessed like, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But also, let me get back to the let me get back to business. There's going to be a a meet and greet also that evening. I'm not sure what time, but uh, you know, we'll have uh, we're planning on having T-shirts and CD singles and posters, and you know, Tony and Sonny, Tommy, Levi, and I will be signing stuff and taking pictures for you know, I guess uh, a, a little while, <laughs> you know, as long as we right. can. But it's you know it's a day of right. show and and that type of thing can really you know kind of break up break up your day and when you have you know sound and you know when you have have to deal with the show the same day it's a uh, it's a uh, I've done it you yeah, know a it's a daunting time. task no. <laughs> you, have to, you you have to be yeah. uh, open to everybody but you still have to keep the show on your mind and mm -hmm. like it's you know. It's not easy, but I mean, this is going to be a one-time situation, as far as I can tell. So we're pulling out all the stops. So we're making ourselves available to the fans. You know, yeah. come on and shake our hands and take a picture. You know, buy something, and <laughs> you know, have a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome yeah. seats. Yeah, I've I've heard also been been typing away here because uh, I was just told that in order to find it on Ticketmaster, you need to look for together. Just let's just risk. Right. Here, the number two gather, uh, mm -hmm. just like like the song. So when you yeah, go we'll to be playing that also. So yeah, yeah. Just just so you know, together yeah. is how you will look for this on Ticketmaster. We'll make sure we put all this information up on the Facebook page on Funkatopia and everywhere else as well, just so you guys have all the information available. Man, okay. Well, two, well, we're we're two oof, months yeah. out, uh, Chris. So it don't uh, matter. Uh, just gotta sell. <laughs> we need to come back like third week <laughs> in right. March. Can Sonny and I come back third week in, in March and absolutely give you progress report? Oh, yeah. you know who, who's joined and how the roster yeah. may have changed? Okay, we should plan yeah. for that. Yeah, you we got it. I'll I'll lock it in. I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call after the show. We'll lock cool. it in. We'll lock it in. Okay. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh -huh. And maybe even get some of the band members that are actually gonna be be joining you to come in. Let's. let's well, here. I mean, it's not an oh, impossibility, yeah. but really, you know, Sonny and I are hosting this event. You know, this is kind of this is uh, our initiative. So you know, I, we don't need anybody else to really get in and swing. But you know, oh, yeah. I, I understand if you if if you want that, and if they're if they're into it, that's fine. But I mean, really, this the the lion's share of the responsibility falls on Sonny's and my shoulders. 
So we will push this yeah. however you want us to push it. We will right. do it. Yeah. We, we I, are at your disposal. I'm just saying I'd rather we guide the ship, you know. Perfect. And I, I don't want to make it, it any harder or demand any more time of the other guys than I need to because this is not going to be easy. But you've done a damn fine yeah. job so far. Okay. Exactly. Well, we'll just keep the beacon on for you. Listen, I keep thinking about the 1750. We need people in the seats. We need people. We got to have people. You know, it's going to be, yep. uh, you know, butts and elbows. Just butts and seats. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Because exactly. so support, so pick up some merch. Do the do the right thing as fans. Like that's that's the point. Well, we're offering oh, yeah. it to, to them. They, you know, it's up to them to want to show. Yeah, because I have so it's many. It's going to definitely be a musical experience for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure, man. This is gonna be fantastic. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, I well, can't. I'm gonna even... have to sell another piece of equipment because I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm selling something, man. Well, you'd be the first musician to, to go into hock. Just to... <laughs> you wouldn't be the first. Dude. Just, just to... my whole rack is out. It, yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> Anybody need a set of Genelec speakers? Oh man, you messed up. I got some Yamaha 10, SM, 10, 10, 10 NSMs uh, over here. Yeah. 25, 25, 35, yeah. 35. Go, go on <laughs> Fast X4 <laughs> track machine. Uh. Oh, my gosh, man. It has been an absolute blessing. Oh you guys, man, I can't. It, just the stories and, and the laughing and this official announcement is just unbelievable. I know people have been. Begging me, what's the announcement? I, like, I can't tell you. Can't tell you. Got to wait. Just got to uh, tune in because I got to let them break it. I got to let them break it. But uh, yeah. man, it was an honor having you guys here for sure. And Sonny, thank you for joining us for the very, very first time. Michael, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. I mean, just unbelievable. Thank just, you, man. Well, we, we I really appreciate it. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't really do think. this a lot. Everybody knows that. So yeah, and, uh, you know. I had, you, had you gone off the rails, I would have had to snap you back, man. Don't be taking, don't be taking Sonny all, yeah, don't be, don't be asking Sonny all that mess, trying to, trying to take him down in the wilderness, <laughs> by the trees in the river. Right, right. Leave, leave Sonny alone, man. No, 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 no. How true that is, Sonny. How true that is about you. Because when we first. Oh, man. When we first met, it was the most hilarious thing because you walked up and uh, me and Mr. Christopher were standing together and he's like, hey, Sonny, what's happening? And Chris goes, hey, yeah, you guys take a picture. And I was like, oh, cool. I walked over and you went, hey. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you Heisman me. You gave me the full on Heisman. Oh, bro. Uh, hey, listen. Sure. I mean, you know, I mean. Prince Mural unveiling. That was the Prince Mural <laughs> unveiling. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's a thing. Oh my I mean, god! I, I got it, Jeff. I understand it. You know, we don't mean to be uh, so guarded, but you no, know, no, no, no people out here. And you know, yeah. some some of some of Prince's fans, they they you know, they, they're oh, oh yeah, you know, we know they, they're how oh, they, they are. Before. So you can't just hang out with anybody, and you can't let everybody just sort of invade your space and you know and intermingle with your energy. It's like it's a real thing, man. Yeah. You know, that's also the reason I, I've been apprehensive about, about doing meet and greets heretofore because that's an interactive experience, man. I don't need anybody throwing me off my game. I got a job to do, you know. Right. But you know, it's like I, I just a gig I did recently. Somebody walked up out of nowhere. Hey, do you mind if I put these flowers everywhere on the stage? Like some <laughs> woman who wanted to just like put petals everywhere. I was doing an Earth Wind and Fire <laughs> tribute at the Dakota. And I and my thought to her, and what I literally said was. Well, that depends. I said, is, is this witchcraft? And she said, well. <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? She said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it that way. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, no. Nah. Uh, no. Right. Uh, it's, You're it's, not very clear about it, yeah. are you? <laughs> and, and, then, and then Stuart Pastor, Sonny, Stuart Pastor came up and just moved her off the stage. Hey, the club said, the, the club said no. Get, uh, get, get out of here. <laughs> Stuart Pastor. I love you, Stuart yeah. Pastor. <laughs> The clean out. He's the like the Apollo. Yeah. yeah, he gave oh, the guy like, like the Sandman. All right. I, wow. Gangway. Get, get, get Coming out. Coming through with the dust buster. Get that out of here. Kinda, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> the club doesn't want that stuff on it. Get, get out of here. So, you yeah, know, but they, you know, they're, they, they're, they're, 
they they could be a, a little eccentric, you know. I'm not oh, yeah. saying that we're on well exactly ourselves, but you know, no. it's the thing, you know, we really kind of have to protect our you have to, gotta pr protect the quan, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right. It's yeah, I, and I totally understand what you're saying. Every single post that I do on Facebook, I have to like read it and reread it and think, can anybody mm -hmm. Like this a certain way was I clip. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the world we're living in now. You know, you yeah. it's just the way it is, you know. And everything you is a be absolutely movie. clear about yeah. what you say. Because conspiracy so, theories are happening all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Just, right. You know, I one of the one of the uh the titles I had thought about for this <laughs> for this event was resurrection. And then uh, Jeff Tobby was like, You sure you want to do that? I mean we're so close to Easter, and it's the night before Prince's passing. It's like, it's like you're right, man. Somebody's gonna think something. They're gonna, gonna be thinking crazy mess. They're gonna think so wow. different thoughts. You know? Like you're right, man. So I'm just, everything. Yeah, exactly. So it's like let's yes. just call up together. Wow. We we'll play the song. Tony will come to town. We'll do Sex MF. We'll do Days of Wild. We'll do this and that. You know. Oh, we'll have the steals. We'll probably do sacrifice of Victor. You know, it's like we're still trying Ooh. to get the uh, no. get the, no, uh, that's me. get all the music together. I got to talk to the artists still and, and lock the selections. I don't know. There. I don't know if you were watching the chat, but uh, the Undertaker kept coming up over and over and over and over. <laughs> uh, what are you? What are you trying to say? Really? <laughs> okay, fine. Just saying, people. People <laughs> don't want to hear it. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? If if we get Eric Gales, maybe we'll maybe we'll do the ride or something. Ooh, that'd be nice. You know? yeah, yeah, that'd be dope okay. for him to play yeah. that. Yeah, just somewhere he can stretch out, you know. Okay. But uh, you know, we're we're waiting to he'll hear back from him. But uh, uh, otherwise, I mean, yeah, you know, I'm I, I we're still moving. I'm we're still trying to consider the repertoire. Right, putting things together. Yeah. yeah you can't wow. really have an Undertaker reunion without Prince. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, one third. Right. And he also right. says, go grab Dale Alexander. <laughs> go grab Dale Alexander. He's playing, he's playing piano now. Yeah, That's and he's right. dope at it. I've heard, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Manfredo Fest. I remember he's taking lessons from him back in the day. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, man, Manfredo Fest, he's getting lessons from him, man. He he got perfect pitch, too, man. So he's learning all the harmonics and Sideways hand, right on, oh, boy. I I've never seen him play, but I know he's been playing around town. Yeah, no, he's mm -hmm. dope, man. All right. Well, shall we call it, Mister Christopher? You got some other questions? You uh, no, absolutely. Well, there's lots of lots of random questions that that people were were coming up with, but I don't know if we want to get into them all because some no. of them really off the. You want to field a couple, and we'll figure it out. All right, here's one. Like, uh, let's just do, a few, like, let's do ten minutes more okay. of just like the random questions. We'll answer with the ones we want, and we'll we'll move on from the ones we don't. All right, so everybody, if if I didn't answer your question, it's be, you know, it's because obviously we're in the middle of a conversation. I may yeah. have missed it. So go ahead and get your questions in, and we'll we'll pick through some of them. Jeff Page will scour some. But here's one: Did P ever gift you equipment? Um, not expressly. I mean. When I when Not I directly. Was band, yeah, I, I mean, Sonny had an endorsement with Warwick, so those bases were not. Right. Sonny got Warwick first, and then Prince had had a couple made, right? Then he right, yeah, he got his thumb base. I, I said you need Sonny to make Prince a couple of these. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, and um, I uh, Sheila had played Peisty cymbals when I got in the band. I I I wanted Zildjian, so I mean. It's mm. uh you know so no I don't I don't know that he, he never like went like here look what I got you you know but um right uh, it's it's it yeah I I always heard it was just um the stories I had heard was that he just kind of gave you uh, gave people blank checks and said just get what you need and I don't do sound like the prince I do <laughs> no he never did that uh uh that's <laughs> the 80s not when he was anyway no what what real player would do that. Right, <laughs> mm. just let people spin up your money whatever way they want. No, <laughs> did you play the ghetto by Donnie during an NPG rehearsal? That's right, it happened, but but um, 
I was un- I was unfamiliar with that record at the time. That's what made me go and get Donny Hathaway live. Oh, was like, yeah. A Prince said, "Sonny, take that bass solo from from uh, Everything Is Everything," and Sonny played it. Nope. Right. Night. I was like, I gotta get that. And Barbarella's like, you ain't got that, man. <laughs> you you're missing something. And I went <laughs> to the to like the Electric Fetus like the next day, and yeah, and, and got Donny Hathaway live and changed my life. I, yeah. I, I saw. Right. Right. I saw a jam session of you, uh, you two, and also uh, Lenny Kravitz, and you. There was like a, there was actually a video that I actually have a video clip of it, but I don't want to play because you guys were just kind of in a jam session mode, just kind of. We were filming. just waiting. Yeah, we were just waiting for Prince to show up. Really. <laughs> that's Sonny was was that Paisley Park? Yeah, Sonny. Sonny, you were playing guitar, and Lenny. Oh, grabbed, that's right. Right. Mm-hmm. Lenny grabbed your bass. I remember he sat down, played drums, right at one point. He, I, and then he played bass. Time. I can't remember. It's been so long. It, it was, well, no, those are two different times. It's it's yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I remember that. Got a little okay. taste of that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Now I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. There's like about three. There's about three minutes of that, but uh, <laughs> I want to get to some of the questions here. Uh, where's another one that I saw? Are you starting some of these? about um, you playing uh, Prince uh, Black guitar or something or Black ba- uh, Black bass? And they were asking if he asked you to play it or suggested it or did you ask him? And I'm trying to find it. So I oh no, he it. wanted me to play it for sure. He wanted. That's an Olympic. The yeah. Olympic. And then yeah, the, the one I can't remember who it was made by. It's a German company, but Oswald. anyway, it's the one that has the bow on the top. Yeah. It was where you Oswald. put your hand through it. Huh? Yeah. It was Oswald. Was anyway, Oswald. They I'm left handed, right? This is just a story about this bass. It's really cool. Oh, anyway, man. we're in rehearsal, yeah. and they and uh, Field and Stream didn't put the the plug in right. <laughs> I don't know where he's at now, but that dude feel he was always reading field and stream when he's supposed to be paying attention. Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. he, put the, he put the back. he put the plug in. Oh, you know where you put the strap on because I'm left handed, so the tension is different. So oh, yeah. I'm standing in rehearsal. This is Prince's bass. I know it just cost like a godly amount of money. So it just pops off. Bang! Hits the floor. Top pops off. It just looked like a broken bone there at that point. Yeah, and, and that was Chris the first like, thing Sonny said. You know how much that costs? <laughs> he said, Sonny, do you know how much that bass costs? <laughs> I said, I guess I'm going to find out my next check. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to need a drink. That hit the ground so hard. Dude. Oh, my I God. I remember that. Yeah, that was, that, that was wow. the whole room just stopped. Like we were just quiet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it like, come here, man. Field stream. <laughs> <laughs> I think he charged him. Actually, Good. it was it was his fault. I think he made yeah. him pay because he didn't set it up right. Well, the uh, so, the the locks the the lock wasn't wasn't. Yeah, the locks were in the wrong place, and it, and it, it wasn't even fixed right. The whole thing went. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fish or this- check? Which one? How so how much you, how much was it though? Oh, I I, I never heard an actual Ooh, dollar. Amount. I don't really know. Close to no. twenty grand, I think. Though. Oh my god! Yeah. Huh? Justin, how did the sh- intro happen? Um, <laughs> okay. it down. The, the short answer is, um, we were preparing to play the song for the NBA weekend. You know, the the beautiful experience was pretty much the. Uh, first time anybody ever heard that song, that arrangement. The song had, had right. premiered also, uh, had been on Tevin Campbell's record. Uh, it was a different version. And we were uh, going to play play that song, and we were expecting him to sit in, and he didn't want to do it. And so we started rehearsing. Prince said, maybe I'll do it. And so we started rearranging it in Studio C, and Prince was like, hold up. We need, like, you know, some breaks and, like, some excitement. Uh, right. Maybe we should do it like um, 
like uh, the Ohio plays, like I want to be free, like kind of like that with you know with some breaks and you know his prince right. and then you do you know, and, and, and you know, right. oh, okay, all right. And so it was like that day or the day before that we had just put the arrangement together, and uh, yes. then we went out there and you know tried it. That was uh, that's, a, that's a great intro for that song. That is, it's it's so yeah, iconic. G minor seven thing, bro. Roll it down. Yeah, that's right. So uh, I, <laughs> that's just that's, that's crazy. crazy. That's how things happen. Well, for us. Like, <laughs> Prince never looked at any situation like it was a problem. It was always an opportunity to do something, you know. And I think that's a that's a really uh, that was a really strong thing that he had within him. Like he was not. If, if his way was blocked in one way, <laughs> he would just find a, 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 a different way in, you know? He would... Um... Right. right. And since we're talking about songs specifically, uh, Rossi Slade said, how did Dark Side come to fruition? That track is funky. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, all I can tell is that it's probably Levi on bass and Prince on guitar, and it's definitely me on drums. But I'm telling you, I don't have any actual recollection of how that even happened. And there's a different version of the same sort of song called <laughs> Right. And I really can't even tell you I, I like I don't know when they happened. It was not we were doing so much at that time. And it's like, you know, some things he finished, some things he didn't. And as you can tell from right. he just <laughs> throw him in the closet. Yeah, that the the you know, the version they released, he's telling me when and to do what during the during the track. Cause you know, it was he was gonna go back in and probably you know, finish the song, you know, but I guess he never did. So what you hear is what you got that, that day, you know. What, wow. Is there a specific song for each of you that is sitting in the vault that you know sitting in the vault that you're going, oh my God, th this song needs to be released. Is there is there one that's, that sticks to your mind for each of you? For me, no, because it's, you know, the no. songs were only developed to a certain point before he'd take them and go, okay, I got it from here and kick everybody out. So, you know, I, I will say that there's one session we did with um with Maceo Parker and Greg Boyer. Oh, with the set with the horn section. The with the horn section. Prince played piano. It all was like like early rock and roll, like like little Richard almost. Like like yeah. early, like we just kind of were were playing grooves from that sort of that out of from out of that certain style. Like before James Brown was like known as you know, for funk, like he was kind of a, you know, it, he was kind of another 50 sort of artist, you know, like stuff like Prisoner of Love, you know, that that sort of thing that yeah. yeah, yeah. was driven differently. It was like, there was no singing, but it was like Maceo and Greg were arranging the strings, uh, uh, arranging the horns rather, and the horn, yeah. and Prince. It was amazing and, watching them cats work. Yeah, it was incredible, man. It was just kind of like a jam yeah, session. That really. was awesome, but, I was like, man, I'm excited to see what he does with this. I don't know mm. if he did anything. So, <laughs> all right, we're, that, we're that gonna... band could have went out right. That could have been a band right there. Oh yeah, that was man. Out. Yeah, Ooh, that was dope. All right, we're right. gonna lock it, lock it to these last three or four questions, just okay. so we you guys yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, this is a real quick one. Bill Harrison wants to know what kind of strings does Sonny play with? You still with DR, Sonny? Uh, I use uh, Warwick high beams. I mean, I'm Warwick. I'm sorry, DR Hybrid. I got Warwick. I'm sorry, man. I'll be saying Warwick. Shut up. <laughs> um, I, I, I use uh, DR uh, high beams <laughs> because they last a long time. <laughs> uh, this you is can the play them and when you wipe them down. It, so how how oh, long nice. before you, how long before you have to change change them out? I mean, do you change them every single show or do you? Probably like every four days, five days when I'm playing constantly, you know, mm -hmm. depending. Sometimes my hands are acidic, so I'm usually trying to suck it all the juice out of them. But these strings, last all I got to do is wipe them off. So um, mm -hmm. probably about, uh, if it's a constant, three days, usually four. So every three days, usually when I'm really on to it. So uh, yeah, after you do sound check. And then you do whatever else you're gonna do, and then you work out, then you play the gig. It's like whoo. Sound like that. <laughs> so 
<laughs> the love is gone. Will there be another Jesse Johnson, Sonny T, and Michael B show? Wow. Um, listen, <laughs> I, Jesse. I, I got to call Jesse. Yeah, he's one of the most incredible guitar players I've ever. Yeah. Heard of. You know, Bad boy. I don't. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know that I'm. Uh, I'm compatible with kind of his sort of method. It's like we we did a lot of jamming. And then by, by the time it came for the gig, we're standing on stage. It's like, well, what are we going to play now? You know? And, uh, <laughs> you know, after, you know, playing like Band of Gypsies for three days, right. it's like, well, what else are we going to do? <laughs> but, you know, I, I right. think he's, uh, I think Jess is incredible, but I don't know that, um, uh, I, 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 I would have to share more authority in the situation personally. Oh yeah, I believe. Uh, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. think he's interested in really anybody telling him what to no, do. No, no, no. And, and I'm not either. So I can I can respect that. So, you know, I mean, right. I know for a fact if we went on a tour with Jesse, we'd sell out everywhere. Right. But oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. It's for it's sure. you know, I mean, we would probably start in Europe. Start at like the new morning and just go. They just go. But I mean, who knows <laughs> what the future may hold, but you know, it's a it it you know, we had we had fun. We had fun. I just uh, it would take a, a you know uh, a, quite a bit more focus if I was going to really do it. Yeah, and he he likes to tour too. I mean, he likes to if, if he's going to do it, he wants to have their a monetary yeah. back or whatever he does. That was right. one of the reasons why he left the original seven was because like are we, are we touring? What what's happening here? And right. then he just stepped out. Mm -hmm. He was like, all right, we're, I guess we're just not. This is not working for me. Sure. No, he's got his yeah. he's got his own own mode, and you know yeah. I'm. I'm kind of just too old to just go along to get along anywhere I go, you know? So it's like, you know, we would have to see, you know, it depends on what, what he was really interested in doing. Yeah. Uh, right. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you really trying to do? You know, mm -hmm. so that's the point. Did Prince ever try to prank you guys or ever prank you guys? Well, I don't think he was Man. to do it to Sonny. No, he he did when when we were I was with Georgia and they came to Milan to play, oh, and yeah. uh, and me and Mike Scott went backstage. We was at the Forum in Milan, and so he's standing there. And then, you know, we're in the, in the little tent he was in. He's like, "Okay, Sonny, come on, man, come on, man. They're gonna give you some ears, man. It's time to, we got to rush on stage. Come on, we always used to do that. Come on, trying to go on stage. So I'm like ready to go with the bass. Ah, I'm just jogging. I'm like. <laughs> I'm getting the finger real quick. <laughs> and, and we started, he started cracking up because he really had me. I really thought it would be because was playing bass. At the time, I thought he really wanted me to sit in. And it was like, I was so ready to play. Because, you know, I had played with him for a minute. That's like, man, dude, come on. Dude. And he just was like, nah, I'm just joking, man. How are you? You try to give me the big, how are you doing? <laughs> how the big how you hey how you doing? Right. Yeah, how you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, well, I think Sonny's Sonny's but, relationship with Prince was Sonny and Prince had a different relationship. Um, you know, yeah. I think because I was the underclassman, you know, that he just didn't really goof around with me like that, really. You yeah. Know? And uh yeah, I don't know. That is just so funny. We'd be talking about people in the studio. And people be looking at us like we were crazy. People that we grew up with that we knew, you know, girls we knew all this stuff, and we be we be like, man, remember that? Who that? What you man? Remember when she walked out? Like, wow! Yeah. You know, everybody be looking at us like, you guys are crazy, man. Yeah, we we forget mean? that Sonny was like, what were you sixteen or seventeen when you met Prince? And he was like fifteen or something. Right. No, no, I love about thirteen. Oh, for real? So I was really, really young. Yeah. Okay. So they've been looking at each other forever. They can so, prank each other. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, you know, I was 20 years old at the time. You know, man. So, now he loves you, man. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Oh, uh, let's wrap up by showing this one more time, just in case anybody. Yeah, sir. Yeah, that's right. The reason we're here is to tell you we're gonna be together Saturday, April 20th. Yes. <laughs> And yep. the Uptown Bar tickets go on sale tomorrow. 
No, Thursday. Uh, is it Thursday or is the day after tomorrow? And thank you for keeping that keeping that on track there, Christopher. Yep. Yes. Um, and please yep. come. Please come. You will really enjoy the show. And we're gonna put our heart and our love into this for sure. Absolutely. Uptown so, Theater, yeah. Minneapolis, mm -hmm. Michael Bland, Sonny Thompson, Levi, Tony M. And Tommy Barbarella and the Steels, as it is currently. Not to say the lineup may not shift yeah. a little bit. It could get better. It could just things could be moving around. That's the reason why they're going to be coming back in March as we get a little bit closer to this yeah, event. Sure. And we're going to we're going to yeah, we're going to for you. But this is an exclusive announcement that you're only having here because it's not even on Uptown's website. It's not on Ticketmaster. It will go on sale, a pre-sale, on this Thursday at ten o'clock. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the pre-sale code that you're only going to hear right here on Funkatopia is FANS, F-A-N-S. So make sure you got that pre-code, and you're going to look for TOGETHER, just like it is here, the number two, mm -hmm. together, TOGETHER. That's what you're going to locate the tickets for, and uh, when they come back in March, they better be reporting a sold-out show, folks. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and, and Add to that, I will be selling merchandise so I can show up. Uh, this, uh, this <laughs> love oh, I'll be selling my SPX 90 uh, reverb. Uh, uh, oh, no. My envelope flower. <laughs> I got lots of stuff to sell. I'm, I'm going to have to do the same, I guess. Gonna, I, I'm gonna have to keep hey, Mark Webster. Hey, man. Uh, Mark Webster, I, I love you, man. I've heard of many things you said in my defense. And, and I appreciate you for it, man. I'm not bringing up no names, but uh, you my man. You my man, man. Yo. You were my man before, but you're still my man, man. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, and Mark is such a good dude. He has accomplished so much in uh, to to support Prince's legacy, between that huge symbol outside of Paisley Park to the renaming of the highway. Mark Webster was the, the man behind all that wow. stuff. Amazing. And he is he, he is he is legit, legit, legit. Yeah, no, I see Mark. I see Mark. I see Webb, man. Webb's all right. He is. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, here's a way to make some money. John Frost goes, can we buy drumsticks? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'll, 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 maybe I'll talk to Vic Firth and see if we can't do like a like a, an exclusive, you know, run. Yeah, have him on sale for the show. I don't know, man. It's not really, I mean, mm. it's, 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 you know, I, I, I'm not really trying to make it about like, you know, I don't, we're not, we're not kiss. We're not trying to you know, so so the right. so the toenails and you, yeah, toenails, coffins and you know, pinball <laughs> machines and whatnot. But oh you know, we'll do some things. See, because the problem with drumsticks is you you they buy them and then they want you to sign them, and then you're trying to sign them on a circular, you know, yeah, it's, it's, that it's never a, works. So yeah, if there are, don't work. If there are any any available, they'll be pre-signed. And I'm not going to go back and re resign them just so you can have right. have one up on your friends. So I'm just <laughs> saying that now. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> and there you have it. Been an honor. I can't even thank you guys enough, oh, man. It is gonna be fun. We will see you guys right. in March for another update, yeah, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Sonny yeah, Thompson, sir. Mike Land, get your tickets on Thursday. Use that. Code fans together on Ticketmaster, mm -hmm. gentlemen. Save the date, Thank you guys. Buy your plane tickets now. Sure. Yep. yep. <laughs> right. Get a, get a hotel. Get that. Yeah. Airbnb. Live long and prosper. My peace, y'all. Thank you so much for having us. Really, man. We'll I'll see, see you guys. tomorrow, Mike. All right, Sonny. I'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you guys All in right. March. All right. We'll see. You. All right. All right. Take care. All right, everybody. There they were, Sunny T and. <laughs> I, I can't. Michael I, Glenn and Sonny T are just amazing just, guys, man. I can't. This is this is just a little bit too much for. Uh, <laughs> man, we've running wow. nonstop. We've been running nonstop. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 been fantastic. I think uh, Funkatopia Live has done six weeks in a row, uh, no break. So I think it's warranted that we kind of maybe do one. <laughs> next week yeah, but you know week. how that goes it's something something will break some news will happen and then i'll end up having to do one anyways but as it stands right now we're gonna just uh man but it can yeah, you it uh, look, exclusive right here on funkatopia 
nobody knew this show was coming other than there was a couple people that I, I did tell that were close friends. Uh, Audrey, jo Audrey Johnson, uh, who, who put me in touch with Michael Bland and, and really kind of helped, you know, spear this along. And then, uh, their manager, Jeff called me and, um, you know, said we need to do this and we did it. So it is phenomenal. This is going to be a huge show. I mean, this is, this is like, the epitome of like a hardcore MPG reunion. You got yes. Sonny T, Michael Bland, Tommy Barbarella, Levi Caesar Jr., Tony M, and the Steels as it stands right now. So you've got all these people that are going to be in Uptown Theater that does not hold a whole bunch. It's 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 a 1700 seat, 1750 seat auditorium. And that's not, it seems like it's a lot, but it's not a whole it considering the event um yeah, and it's right. one day and they're not going to be doing it it's just like a one hit chapeau um right. need to pack it, it out the show will be april 20th saturday april 20th in minneapolis at the uptown theater tickets go on sale this thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning that is the pre-sale so you have to have the pre-sale code to get those tickets which they which we just unveiled right here, which is fans, F-A-N-S. You're not going to get this anywhere else. I'm sure there's some, probably some other uh, purple groups that have picked it up and uh, have already posted it out it's there. Already it's already leaked for sure. It's, I'm sure it's already leaked now. They they probably stripped it from the show and it's probably already out there. But uh, if, it, <laughs> if it is, it's fine. I, I, it, I don't, it doesn't, I, we want the tickets to sell, but I will be posting it on all of our social channels as well. Um, yeah, it's just uh, no one know. Christine asked how much um, will the tickets cost? No idea. We don't, I don't know yet. But, but, but whatever it is, pay it. <laughs> right, pay it. <laughs> It'll be less than the celebration. I'll tell you that. Yeah, just pay it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, uh, whatever that's going to be. But uh, yeah, and on top of that, you know, what I was saying before was that, you know, I said last week, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just don't think I'm going to be able to make it. I'm almost kind of feel like I, I have to, I have to go, um, not just for the show, but also on April 21st, it will be the eight year anniversary of Prince's passing. So I'm thinking about possibly doing another, uh, I know Nick Garcia said that he would help me out if I couldn't make it, but possibly doing a, a candlelight vigil at Riley Creek across the street from uh, Paisley Park on April 21st. So maybe fly out Saturday, come back, um, come back Monday. Right. So I only take like one day off of work. That may be doable. So, all right, let's, let me, yeah. let me do some thinking. Let me do some thinking. I can uh, see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll just do it. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, let me, and I just want to go ahead and we started off, the show we were talking a little bit about the pre-show how uh last week we were so excited that we had crossed 60,000 facebook followers <laughs> that's a lot of facebook followers and in yeah. one week in one week we went from 60,000 to 63,000 followers in one week we gained 3,000 followers in one week that's, that's amazing it's that's amazing. it's pretty that's freaking awesome. incredible thank you yeah. Everybody. So, yeah. Thank you guys so so much for for all that. It's been um, it's been an amazing ride for sure. And uh, it's just uh, hopefully we just got, we can just keep on moving and and keep on pushing forward because that's really um, pretty amazing. Uh, but let's talk about some other shows that happen to be out there as well. Uh, yes. Thank you for that scroll too. The scroll uh, that's that Jeff Page just put on the bottom. Uh, you can also support us as well. Uh, the money won't be used to get tickets to go to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if you do donate, um, it's it's not, it, you can donate one-time donations to Venmo at Funkatopia. That's F-U-N-K-A-T-O-P-I-A -A, uh, via cash app at dollar sign Funkatopia, F-U-N-K-A-T-O-P-I-A. And you can also become a monthly subscriber, which is really, really cool because, um, I give all, all kind. once a year I give out, I give out gifts. I send, I literally will send physical gifts to like, like the top three levels or whatever. Um, 
physical gifts and on top and everybody gets like music files and all kinds of stuff that I have and stuff. So every month that happens. Um, and that's at patreon.com slash Funkatopia. That's P A T R E O N.com slash Funkatopia. Um, I've, you know, set up, uh, clocks made out of Prince's 45s. It took Prince's 45s and made a clock out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I have <laughs> that. And, uh, the last one I just did was I sent, uh, I sent uh, the top two tiers, I think, uh, third eye glasses. So, yeah, it's so I'm, it's, I'm always trying to do something, something different. I uh, that. uh, did you, did you, uh, we'll, 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 we'll right. figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But let's talk about so. But anyways, the reason why we do the the funding is because of the fact that we have the amazing app called Funked Up that you can download, which has just been updated by the amazing app developer Michael Sweet, who uh, just re- redesigned the entire app. It's called Funked Up, and it has two ASCAP licensed. This is that's the important part. ASCAP licensed radio stations. One is a twenty four seven Prince radio station, and one is a twenty four seven Funk radio station that very, very heavily leans Prince, uh, as well. It also you know, plays like a few Prince songs an hour. Uh, all that being said, both are ASCAP licensed, and that's really between that and the streaming and, uh, the, just ev- everything that goes with everything that we do, um, is kind of how we keep these things afloat is from you fine folks. And so if you can please support us, that would be fantastic. We want to keep these things going. Uh, but the app is the primary monetary extraction because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. that ASCAP, the ASCAP licensing is no joke. Uh, it's like, it's like how many listeners were listening? What songs did you play? How long did they listen? It's just like, yeah. kill me now, kill me now. Just friggin' kill me now. Uh, anyways, this um, is show. this is good stuff. Yeah. And the, uh, yeah, Lisa says the embroidered t-shirts are nice. Yeah. I, I we do actually have, t-shirts and and funkatopia gear that you can get on the store at funkatopia.com slash shop that's f-u-n-k-a-t-o-p-i-a.com slash shop you can actually go there and all of our shirts i don't have any shirts that are like this all of the shirts that we have with the funkatopia logo they're embroidered they're not a little yes they're all embroidered the hats are all embroidered there's nothing that's screened on uh, other than we, at one point in time, we had the the mask, you know, in, during the pandemic and uh, shortly after the pandemic, we sold Funkatopia mask. Um, but other than that, that was the only thing, but everything that's, you, that's there, shirts and hats, they're all embroidered and it's free shipping in the store across the board. And there's a huge sale going on there. So if you want to pick up gear, Funkatopia.com slash shop. Let's talk about some shows that are coming besides the fantastic one that we just learned about with uh, Together. Michael Bland, Sunny T, Levi, Tony M, Tommy Barbarella, The Steels, April 20th in Minneapolis at Uptown Theater. Tickets go on sale this Thursday at 10 a.m. Presale code is FANS, F-A-N-S, and it's not listed anywhere. You just, you're hearing about it here first. But also, uh, Questlove, who was mentioned during this broadcast as well, and Black Thought have announced the Roots Picnic is back. Roots Picnic is June 1st through 2nd, so you don't have to worry about that because normally the celebration always conflicted with the Roots Picnic because it always happens somewhere in that first week of June, and the celebration this year is going all the way to the end of June to kind of coincide with the release of Purple Rain, the movie, and the soundtrack, which happened towards the end of June. But the Roots Picnic will be happening June 1st and 2nd, and they've got Little Wayne with the Roots. That's ridiculous. Little, <laughs> Little Wayne and the Roots. Come on. Um, oh, that's going to be a beast show. <laughs> and, trombone, and Trombone Shorty is actually playing with him. So you got Tuba Gooding Jr. that's going to be playing. Jordan? I mean, on, well, Tuba Gooding, Tuba Gooding Jr. Was, only, was the only horn section that the Roots really kind of ever had. They never really had a, a, a horn section. It's always just been Tuba Gooding Jr. But then to have trombone shorty in the mix now just it's just ridiculous and Nas is going to be there jill scott's going to be there black thought who is the lead singer of the roots for those who are not familiar with the roots he's going to be sitting in with method man and red man i right, come on this is this is just like babyface is going to be there while is going to be there robert glasper is going to be there 
it's just there's like so many people that are in this mix it just doesn't make any sense it's uh it, it's it's going to be definitely a, a fun funk hip-hop it's yeah. just wow yeah it's uh it's gonna be pretty amazing so there it is and and oh of course i can't miss the fact that andre 3000 is going to be there also doing his new blue sun live flute mm -hmm. show uh which is the new age thing that uh, he's been doing it's uh yeah, it, some, yeah the, put together a travel budget we're gonna have to put together a travel budget so we can keep up with all this. it just doesn't make sense anymore this is crazy uh, yeah it doesn't uh and here's one that's kind of interesting uh this not is obviously not the most extensive lineup here but primus is going back on tour which is kind of unusual uh and they're playing with coheed and cambria but one of the things i also found interesting here is that also Fishbone is going to be in this mix and Fantastic Negrito is also going to be in this mix. I was like, what a combo. Uh, I, I can see, I, yeah, I, I can see Fishbone in this mix because they're always kind of that haywire, you know, yeah. ska funk type of thing. Uh, but to have Fantastic Negrito in that mix is just, that's, that's, that's pretty interesting too. These tickets are going on sale as well. So man, it's just been, uh, this has been insane. It this has is, been. It's just been yeah. insane, you know. Um, and I will. We'll just throw out these couple little two uh, tidbits here. Um, we were talking about. Has anybody here seen One Love? The the uh, the new. I guess the new Bob Marley biopic. Yeah, I Bob guess this. Yes. Here's here's something interesting that I I. Uh, I found on this and I, I was very surprised when I, it, this caught me off guard a little bit because it, it really, there's a article on slate that says the Bob Marley movie continues the flattening of the soul rebel into another dorm room poster. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting header. <laughs> Let me read this just for a second. Right, what, is, what are you saying here? Yeah. Cause, cause I haven't seen, essentially they're saying, you know, uh, but it was all answered within this first, of course, there's the, the side by side comparison. Well, it's not too bad. It's not too yeah. bad. No, this is, yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, but what's interesting is this first paragraph is fantastic. It reads biopics of massively famous musicians are rarely very good. Often because they stumble at the question of whom exactly they're being made for. Are you making a movie for the already initiated diehard fans yearning to see the life and times of their hero reflected back at them in exacting detail? Or is your movie a welcome mat for novices, a breezy jukebox of greatest hits aimed at cultivating new generations of fans, goosing stream tally, streaming tallies and catalog sales in the process? Hmm. Most musician biopics never manage to resolve this tension in part because they're usually also serving a third master namely the musician's estate, which tends to hold its own very specific ideas about on-screen depiction. That now, obviously, awesome. now, obviously, we're talking about the Bob Marley movie, One Love, that they're referring to. But what I find interesting about this is how applicable this is to the Prince Estate. The Prince Estate, yeah. Absolutely. How applicable this is to what's happening right now with the purple rain broadway show the uh it's just you know i think i'm trying to figure out exactly where prince fans need to be in this mix as far as really properly setting expectations when we are experiencing anything that gets released from the state whether it be a new box set or whether it be a broadway play or whether it be this Netflix biopic, which I'm hearing now is not going to happen at all. Yeah. That's what I've heard. I've heard it's not, it's, it, it's because there's so much conflict and there's so much, so much problematic stuff going on with Clarence or whatnot, that the Netflix thing is probably just toast, uh, which would be a really, dis, dis, probably a big disappointment, but would it be as right. us as the hardcore Prince fans, would it be? And, and that's actually part of the problem. It, it's not 
the uh, creative concepts and ideas that they're trying to do. Now, unfortunately, with the certain fan bases, they have a preconceived notion of what something going to be. The complaints come before that they actually know what's happening, what's going to happen. So you got all this build up and tension before right. we actually get a product. That's where the real problem comes in because, you know, everyone wants to be open minded. We want to go, come on. But then you hear something's coming out and immediately you think, oh, it's going to be this. Oh, they probably want that. Oh, it's supposedly this person. And then all the negativity starts. So, you know, there's no what, what can you do? The, the complaints come before the product's even there. So <laughs> you're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, and I think this goes to what I was talking about before when I'm just simply doing Facebook posts. Yeah. It seems like I just release like an innocuous Facebook post and somebody gets upset somehow because oh, we shouldn't be talking about this or or we shouldn't be reflecting on this. And I just I can't believe that people are fighting about this and Prince wouldn't want this and this, that, and the other. It's like, oh my God. It <laughs> it, it is like a net it. I, I love all the Prince fans. I love you guys dearly, but some of you are batshit crazy. I'm just going to just go ahead and say it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Some of you are like off the rails and, and, uh, I, I'm, I've, I've had to block. I, I've, I've never, <laughs> I've never, I've never muted or put somebody off to, you know, and, and said, you can't be in this group anymore because you're just causing just dissension. And everything we say, it is about dissension. It's just like, what can I, it's like you're trolling at that point. It's just, right. I can't, oh my God. Right. Uh, I, 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 I love Prince fans. I, I am a Prince fan. I'm a hard, I consider myself a very, very hardcore Prince fan. There are people that are way more hardcore than I am and, and know, you know, like Questlove who knows, you know, specific dates and producers and all that stuff. I, I, I have to look most of that stuff up. Uh, but I, you know, some of these people that go down this rail of, Oh, what would Pr Prince wouldn't have liked that. You have no idea what he would have liked. Who, who are you? And why are you saying this? And, and so I, I think this is kind of a really big issue that I think that we as Prince fans are going to have to embrace or just properly set these expectations because we're going to have to accept the fact that whatever the estate does is going to be driven by that bottom line. Right. Because that, that's, that's essentially what we've seen. That, that's essentially yeah. what we've seen. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, when you look at the stuff for the, you know, there's not really been anything that's been outside of the inclusion of, you know, these unreleased tracks that has really appeased a lot of us. But the reality of it is, is that if they release something that is specifically designed for us hardcore fans, like, I don't know, uh, you know, a remastering of the undertaker or a remastering of Exodus or, you know, something, you know, with a bunch of, you know, deep cuts it's not going to sell it's i mean it will it, it will buy it we will buy it yes right but there will not be enough to warrant that release for the estate right the general populace is not going to touch it yes. they won't recognize it they won't know now yes over time you can turn people on to it because it's a re-release or a new release or whatever but that's not that's not going to help them now during the release time. So yeah, that's realistic. And, and the other thing too, you know, that we've said, and you know, we know that the estate watches the show. We know that members of the estate watch the show. We, we, we've seen it. I've even had conversations with them. Um, so what I I've said that would really kind of create a nice residual income for them would be to do something like repurposing the NPG music club. Yeah. Doing something where you can, where the hardcore fans can have some type of monthly subscription to something, whether it's a service, it doesn't necessarily have to be something like the MPG Music Club, but something monthly, where we can get, we can get those super deep cuts. We can get those videos of those live shows from Rock and Rio or wherever that were professionally shot. We can get those live concerts that were recorded from the soundboard. We can get. You know, those things that we want, that we're willing to pay a monthly premium for in order to have access to those things in order to kind of, you know, 
that would appease us, create revenue for them that will be ongoing. Um, and at that point in time, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a numbers game, but I know that there is the whole distribution process and, and figuring all that and just trying to figure out exactly, you know, how you put that into place. But it's, it's something that is, it's something that is feasible. It's something that is, is simple enough to do. You already have everything there. You don't have to like master to master to remaster and whatever. You don't, you don't even necessarily even need that. That's what you know, these official releases and stuff are for. You know, we're okay with just a good quality sounding recording of, of something that we haven't heard before. We haven't heard before. Um, yeah. That's just, um, you know, you know, the, I mean, it's yes, there, there are, uh, Joshua. Okay. is just like really, uh, however, really bootlegged. Um, yeah. there are so many things that are bootlegged. Um, and, and, and to, to that point of bootleg, <laughs> sorry, Chris, you say it all the time. They could knock these bootleggers, you know, out of business. If well, they by the, by the part. These things and create them. Absolutely. That Prince Piano on a Microphone show is like a gold mine that they're just sitting on right now. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the final two shows that they recorded in Atlanta, which were his final two concerts ever, which I understand were audio recorded. I was at both shows and I do not recall seeing any cameras anywhere. I don't, I didn't see any flow. I was, I was fifth row for that 7 PM show. I don't remember seeing any cameras. I mean, there may have been like positioned cameras, maybe in the balconies or overhead or side or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were not, if there were cameras, they weren't obvious. Um, but we also know that he records everything audio wise, but you released the audio of that. Ugh, that right there is a gold mine itself. That right there would just blow off the shelf. And on top of that, you also have uh, the one that we do know was camera video recorded and audio recorded was the one that Paisley Park, which is what they made uh, that one bootleg of. I keep pointing over here because I managed to get a hold of it because I wanted to see it. I was like, if they were to do it, what would it look like? And it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Uh, maybe I might even sell that so that I can get to the show in April. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to, I have to. I know, that's what I was laughing at earlier. Elena says a monthly Paisley park, like Chewy for dogs or a bark box. <laughs> In this case, it's music and strategize merch. Yes, Elena, I agree. That's what I was laughing at when you started talking. Uh, yeah, so those final concerts, um, yeah, those final concerts, I mean, everybody's used to that monthly subscription model anyways, but those final concerts, that's one thing that would drive everybody nuts because of the fact that, A, it is something that the hardcore fans want because they want to hear for those who didn't make it to the show, they want to hear that final concert. And B, even the even the curious fan be like, man, what would what did his last concert sound yeah. like? Oh, yeah. Oh, it believe me, it would be the hardcore fans, the curious fans, the people I mean, who weren't even terribly fans that much would still want to know because it would become another phenomena that you can't you can't stop the wave of energy that's going to come out. I mean, and <laughs> sorry, I keep the peanut butter boxes here. I can't get that out of my head. I'm sorry. So yeah, yeah. So a, a chewy box for Prince fans. Yeah. So yeah, I, I MPG Music Club, a rehashing of it in some form or fashion to create a monthly subscription that would create a residual income that's happening every single month is, is definitely doable. And, um, yeah, I agree. Joni said it would get Grammy nominated for sure. Probably win. Yeah, because most of those, you know, posthumous releases, like you know, even with you know, Dark Star with David Bowie, um, you know, he knew that he was going to. He knew that he was dying, and he put his all into his final album. He knew that was going to be his very, very final album, and he put his all into the album, and it came through. Yeah. Um. You know, it's just uh. You know. Uh, okay. what was other one that was laughing like gosh <sighs> well oh somebody else said so uh, what was it uh i just saw now p funk over here lying he says i'm late what show was in april <laughs> okay no you're not 
P Funk has been here since like like since we started, so he's like lying. Uh, what to say it again? He's like change the subject. <laughs> what show is happening? What show? Uh, Who are you guys? <laughs> Uh, I see that Madonna had another fall on stage. Uh, one more print. Let, let's just talk about. Uh, yeah, let's talk about, the, let's talk about the Kanye, the Kanye thing, and the record store thing, and then we'll call it a night. Uh, the Kanye thing is kind of interesting as well. For those who don't know, uh, Kanye and um, Kanye has released a brand new song with Ty Dolla Sign called "Vultures One," and it skyrocketed up the charts. But the problem with it is is that uh, none of the samples that are, or a good portion of the samples that were included in this song have not been cleared. Um, So Kanye has released Vultures One um, and he's still using an uncleared Black Sabbath song that we all know. You don't even have to be a Black Sabbath fan to not know Iron Man. Um, So it's, it's being used in his uh, in his song and it, and specifically Ozzy Osbourne said you are not allowed to use this song because you are an anti-semite and so therefore I think that you are full of hatred and you're causing a lot of problems with some of your social beliefs and so therefore and religious beliefs so therefore I am not you are not clear to use it and he used it anyways which is crazy. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also a clip from Sly Stone. Uh, from a, It's a sample from a song called She's My Baby, where Sly Stone was actually playing with a group called the Mojo Men. Um, and uh, there's also uh, another track called Hell of a Life. That is, and So there's like a bunch of tracks, a bunch of clips that are in this song that were never, were never cleared. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what the thought process is. It's like, wh- why, why, you know, you're going to end up giving all that money back when you get sued. And it's like, just normally what these people do is they let the song get as big as it's going to get and get as much money as it's going to get. And then they hit. That's kind of what hit. happened with, um, uh, what's that song with, uh, Robin Thicke and, uh, yeah. Uh, blurred lines. Blurred lines. Yeah, right. Blurred lines. That's what happened with blurred blurred lines. They let it get as big as it was going to get. They let it get super, 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 super big. And then Marvin Gaye's estate was like, um, hi. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, uh, I, I can, I can see that's a, I kind of feel like that one's a little bit of a stretch. It's not really a stretch, but it, I mean, it was close, but it wasn't really, you know, yeah, well, it's old news. They decided and it's gone. It's gone. All yeah, right, last one. Had to really listen to it to decide. Oh, I see. But, oh yeah. yeah, right, exactly. All right, last one. Record store day. Uh, here we got another record store day that again happens on April twentieth, the same date as the concert. This is actually really really cool because also if you're in Minneapolis to see this show on April twentieth at the Uptown Theater in Minneapolis with pretty much an MPG reunion. Um, it's also record store day. So you can go to Electric Fetus so or you can go to Cheapo Records. Cheapo Records, in my opinion, is probably the better of the two. Um, Electric Fetus is cool, but Cheapo Records is a true vinyl hunter place. It's fantastic. But all that being said, here we are, another record store day, and there has not been any release uh, not been any announcement of any release from the estate for record store day. Uh, this is obviously the record store day UK listing, but they, it's the same. It's the same everywhere, but it's uh, this is all that's going to be released. And it doesn't even have anything to do with the estate. This was 94 East featuring prints. Uh, it's the you know, Pepe Willie, uh, Pepe Willie project that featured prints on it. And there was some, you know, he played, he played all through it, but it is uh, essentially going to be just not the 94 East project. And it's being released by a label called Charlie, which I'm sure, you know, is something that Pepe Willie worked out or whatever. Um, but that's the only thing that's going to be released on record store day on April 20th. So here we are. It's, it's February 20th. So we're talking, you know, two months out, two months out. 
February 20th to March 20th, March 20th to April 20th. That's two months out and nothing. Uh, that's, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully that'll change. Uh, the, maybe they'll keep it secret. But no. I think that stuff takes planning to release vinyl. I don't, I don't know the whole process of what it takes to release vinyl, but we have seen smatterings of the symbol album that have uh shown up and what was the other one there was another one there was a couple that showed up that had that were somehow some vault some uh plant had them or whatever and we, we shared them on the show yeah um but yes. do they have them pressed and ready to go and if so why have they not made that announcement i don't know we don't know all right i'm calling it Guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had a fun time tonight with the one and only Sonny Thompson and Michael Bland from NPG were here and they came to talk it up. They were actually here to make an announcement, but uh, I also kind of bargained with them and said, hey, let's let's do a full blown you know interview and, and talk a little bit about NPG and some of the history and stuff. And they did not disappoint such fantastic stories and so many things. And of course, uh, if you missed it, they're going to be doing a show. They're going to be releasing a brand new song um, that is going to be coming out called Brothers. And uh, they're doing an NPG show reunion of sorts in Minneapolis on April 20th, 420, folks. Um, and it's going to be at the Uptown Theater. Tickets go on sale on Thursday, this Thursday, which will be February 22nd. And it's going to be done at 10 a.m. That's the pre-sale, though. So you need to know the pre-sale code, which is FANS, F-A-N-S. And it is going to feature a bunch of tracks um, from the MPG era. Um, <laughs> potentially Exodus, you know, obviously stuff from Diamonds and Pearls, obviously stuff from all over the map. So Ooh. you are going to be in for a surprise. And they also talked about the sacrifice of Victor because... It's not only going to be Michael Bland and Sonny T, but it's also going to be Levi Caesar Jr. That's right. Mr. Levi Caesar. Yes, sir. <laughs> Levi Caesar. Tony M is going to be in there as well. Tommy Barbarella is going to be in there as well. And the Steels are going to be there, which is one of the reasons why they are going to be able to potentially do the Sacrifice of Victor. So you're talking about a massive show and it's only 1700 seats. So you need to be in front of all this and hit that ticket master this and get your tickets because it's going to go and it's going to go fast. Yeah. So be there. Don't be anywhere else. It's going to be unbelievable and uh, just you know, get it where you can. You have been listening to Funkatopia Live. I am your host, Mr. Christopher WTF. Welcome to Funkatopia. Yeah, get that Funkatopia gear and so you can wear it and proudly and support the station too. And my illustrious co-host Jeff Page is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add some music to that. <laughs> yeah, we got to. And good night, everybody. We hope you had a fun time because I know we certainly did. We had a blast tonight. And we probably will take next week off, but we'll see if that sticks because most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Adios, amigos y amigas. See you soon. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,